Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, we uh, Okay. Awesome. So um we won't be this is not gonna be a live set um class. It's actually gonna be a recorded uh video, which I'm gonna be playing, and this is gonna be under Tommy Vina, okay? Okay. I'm just waiting on okay. anybody else that's coming into the training class. Giving them a couple more minutes. <clears throat> Give him like two more minutes. Um, uh, we got a bunch of tacos in here. If you guys, did you grab some? There's like so many. So if you want to, we'll take a little break if you want to get some later. Okay. Just so you guys know, um, everyone on virtual can hear us good. I can see you guys. I'll be looking to the side to look at you guys, or actually I can see you on the screen right there, which is pretty nice. So, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take the first session, break it into two sessions. And the first session will just be introduction, kind of breaking down what to expect over the next few days, few weeks and just like general advice and knowledge. And then the second half is not gonna be general, it's gonna be specific. So the second half is gonna be numbers. We're gonna go into the career path, understanding you know, how each position works along the way, how to uh, get promoted to each position and what the pay looks like at those levels and how to earn income and, and all that. Cause I say, you can't win the game if you don't know how to score points. So we're gonna go over kind of the, the way to put some, some points on the board. All right, so we'll do that the second half. So um, definitely want to have some notes for today, though. We will be going over numbers. If you have a calculator on your smartphone, we're probably going to be tapping into that just a little bit. So um, it's not going to be crazy mathematics, but it'll definitely be some math involved. So sometimes I go over the numbers. Most people can understand because it's not crazy math, but it's it's numbers. And I could see sometimes people will start getting like a glazed look over their eyes and you know, they start, start seeing like, they'll start drooling. I'm going over numbers and it's just a way over their head. So, um, but it's not that crazy stuff. The board looks good. I'll, I'll make sure I got a good whiteboard here um, for that. Uh, so the, uh, the first part will probably go for 45 minutes or so. I could probably have us wrapped up here by two o'clock central time. And then we can take a 15, 20 minute break. Depends on how you guys are feeling. And then we'll jump back into it probably for about another half or another hour or so. So I could predict us being done by 3.30 would be the target goal. And obviously we want to end before that if possible. All right. But if anybody has any questions, we got all the way till four today. You know, technically I have this time set aside. So if you got questions, we can still go into them. All right. So we'll start with uh, class and what's going to happen over the first you know, two weeks, these next two weeks. Today's our first day of class. So each day for the next two weeks, we have a broken down kind of like in the three sections, three sessions. The first session in the mornings is designed for us to role play and practice our script out loud. Uh, you want to practice like you play. So in the mornings, if you want to just think about how's it going to flow, you know, tomorrow's Tuesday, right? So the first week of training, your goal is to master the first half of the presentation. So week one, don't really worry about knowing the full thing. I would, because you can learn it two ways. You can learn the first half of this presentation, guys, and get it down 100% week one. And then week two, you're going to master the second half of the presentation and get that down 100%. Rather than going through week one, and you know the full presentation, but you only know it 50%, right? 
So we'd rather know the first half, 100 than the 100%, 50%, if that makes sense, okay? So during week one, we're gonna slowly start getting more comfortable and confident with this first half. So if tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, typically tonight, I'll just let me go back tonight on Monday, tonight we make phone calls. So tonight will be a chance for you to learn, listen, maybe participate a little bit if you've already listened to phone calls before, but if you've never heard phone calls and this is your first night, then this will just be observation night on the phones. But if you've been here for a night or two and you feel comfortable, you can take that script, call off of that script and start maybe participating even tonight. But the goal is tonight, we're gonna to set appointments for Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Thursday, we're gonna set appointments for Friday and Saturday. So tomorrow on Tuesday, uh, in the mornings, you're gonna practice your presentation in the morning, maybe 10 to 25%. Wednesday, we're gonna practice the presentation, maybe 25, 35%. Thursday in the mornings, we're going to keep practicing, but now we hopefully you can practice it all the way up to 45, 50%. And Friday, you definitely can practice the whole 50% with your role playing in the morning. Remember, you want to practice like you play. I had someone who came in to do their script review with me one time. And I was like, how do you got your script? They're like, I got it down. And then when they went to say it out loud, they were struggling, right? I said, like, what happened? I thought you had, he's like, I've been practicing it all week. I'm like, well, who have you been practicing it with? He was like, nobody. I guess it was just myself. I'm like, well, I'm, all right, so were you, who were you, how many times have you said the script out loud? And he was like, not really. I guess I was just saying it in my head mostly, right? And I had to think, you know, I thought about it. I was like, well, that's not going to work because you can't uh, call a client and sit down with a client, right? And then just say the script in your head to them. <laughs> That's not gonna work, right? You have to practice like you play. So, so when you're practicing your script, as much as you say, you wanna actually practice saying those words out loud because your muscles develop muscle memory, right? And your mouth and your jaw and your tongue, and, and it's all a muscle and a flow. So if you start doing it, eventually you'll be saying things and doing things without even thinking about it. The first time I grabbed a golf club, I had to really think about how I needed to hold the club. If anybody ever held a golf club before, it's actually pretty awkward because you got to like hook a finger around another finger somehow, right? Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? Maybe not. But for me, I, I grew up in an area where golfing wasn't around. You had a basketball court. And you played football where I grew up, maybe played a little league baseball. There was no hockey rinks where I grew up. We grew up in Pittsburgh, but for, for part, we didn't, we, golf wasn't even a thing. You know, ice skating, you didn't go ice skating. We didn't go golfing where I was from. Okay. So the, finally, I go golfing when I'm older with all these, like these, these kids that they grew up. So they get the golf club and I'm literally holding it like a baseball bat. <laughs> I was holding the golf club like a baseball bat. You're not supposed to do that. Now that I'm used to doing it, if you handed me a golf club, I wouldn't even have to think twice about how to hold it. But for the longest time, I had to focus on how to hold the club. So, so the cool thing is right now, some things that you actually really have to focus on that sounds pretty basic to someone, eventually for you, it's going to be you're going to do it without even thinking, you know. So um, you got to give yourself an opportunity to do that. And practice like you play. So saying things out loud, having a practice partner, having a peer that you can go back and forth from. I learned a lot in doing it. And then watching myself was the most painful thing ever, but it was one of the most um, learning experiences, the best learning experience that I had. So they say the, the, the eye in the sky never lies. The biggest friend that you're going to have, the biggest tool that you're going to have to improve is, is the camera. Um, you can put yourself on film practicing with your, let's say, let's, let's just say you, you two right here, we got you guys uh, hook up and, and you guys start role playing together, right? Afterwards, you can actually pull your video and watch yourself doing it. And you're going to see a bunch of things you instantly need to improve, right? You're going to be your own worst critic, you know? So um, after you practice, then you watch yourself practice. I can't tell you how useful of a tool that is. When we, uh, I, I played college football. So at college football, you'd go to practice 
And then at practice, they had these huge uh, like uh, towers that were built. And people had to climb up the towers with a video camera on their back. And then they would sit up on these cameras and they would videotape us practicing, you know? So after practice, the tape went right to the coach. The coach went right to the thing. He said, go get a shower, meet me in the film room. And we'd have to go watch ourselves practice. I'm like, I just spent two hours practicing. Now I got to spend a whole hour watching myself practice? Yes. We weren't allowed to eat dinner until you watched yourself practice, right? And I found out, you know, Ohio State, they, they actually have that same system in place. They practice, they watch themselves practice, then you're allowed to eat dinner, you know? So um, that's going to be a useful tool for you in, in, in your development because you can see yourself and what you're doing right, what you're not doing right. So um, during your first uh, two weeks, all we're going to do in the mornings is just practice our presentation. That's it. Practice it. Because in the evenings, that's when we're going to have appointments. So by then, you don't want to be still practicing and getting ready to go. Uh, in the evenings, that's when you want to actually participate. So tomorrow, Tuesday, it's your first day. You'll practice in the morning. In the evenings, that's when you're going to want to hop on um, appointments with your manager and start participating. Now, if I was working with you, you know, I might tell you, all right, it's your first day. You can do maybe 10 or 20% of the presentation. I'll pick up from there, you know? Then, then the next day we'll go through and coach a little bit. And I'll say, hey, you did a great job on all this. Now, tomorrow, let's, let's increase over here. Let's improve this. Let's add this. You know, now, now Wednesday, instead of doing 10 or 20%, now Wednesday, we're role playing 25, 30% in the morning. And then in the evening, well, we already saw you do it in the morning and you rocked it. So I know that you can do that at night with the clients. So Wednesday night, guess what you'll be doing? Now you'll be doing maybe 25, 30% of the presentation. So then Thursday, we hop on the phone, set appointments, you role play in the morning, because then Friday and Saturday, this is your chance to do the full first half of the presentation. You want to have that down, have that comfortable. So week one, you have that under your belt, you have that, that first 50% comfortable enough to where you can start stepping into the second half. Now week two, guys, it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the mornings, role playing, but then the second half of the presentation. So Monday, maybe 60%, Tuesday, 70, you know, Wednesday, 80, Thursday, 90, and, and Friday, maybe a hundred percent. You can actually say the whole thing, do the whole thing. So by the end of the second week, we're out there, we're, we're, me and you are out there together. We have appointments, but now I'll do one, you do one. I'll do one, you do one. And we could actually cross pitch. We call that cross pitching where you do one, I do one, and we rotate back and forth, right? Um, at the end of these first two weeks, you should feel comfortable enough to go through a live presentation front to back from a client, but you will not be 100% comfortable or confident in what, in what we're doing. It's impossible. The rule is, the, it's a rule of thumb. It's a saying, they say that you're never going to be 100% comfortable until you do 100 presentations. Every presentation that you do, you become 1% more comfortable and confident in what you're doing. So you could imagine you're going to go out there, your first presentation, and you are going to feel uncomfortable and not really confident either. You know, you're not going to be exuding much confidence. It's your first one. So you're going to be 0% comfortable, 0% confident, 99% uncomfortable, 99% unconfident. But after you give about five presentations, now you're going to get about 5% comfortable but you're still 95% uncomfortable. So you have to keep that in mind, okay? And, and starting like your, your career, starting today, you have to just let yourself know this is going to happen. My son is going to play football this year. First time ever. Do you know what's going to happen? His head is going to be so sore that you ever wear a football helmet? That gives you a head, it crushes your head. It takes you at least two months, two, maybe a month to get used to wearing a helmet. He's going to cry. He's going to want to quit and his head's going to hurt, right? I tell him this up front to let him know. And so he can prepare for it as best, you know, as possible. 
So I'm letting you guys know right now, okay? Don't sign up for football if you're going to quit. Because part of football means that you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be sore. Your head's going to hurt. Something, you're going to be, it's part of it. You wore a hockey helmet, hockey, right? Those things got to hurt just as much as a football helmet. I could imagine, you know, the forehead crushes your forehead. It's all sore. And then you're banging it against other helmets. So just add to that on top of everything, you know? So I have to tell my son, you're going to be sore. But you signed up for football. So guess what you're going to do? You're going to play football until the season's completely over, okay? You're going to finish what you started, right? So I want you guys to just make that commitment right now, knowing you're going to have a little bit of uncomfortableness. I promise you, you're going to feel not confident. You're going to feel like, I don't know if I can do this. You're going to feel sore, tired, stretched a little bit. Um, that's all natural. Every other kid that plays football, their head hurts too right? Your, your head hurts, his head hurts. He quit, you didn't. That's the difference, you know? So um, the first hundred presentations that you guys do, that anybody does in this career, is the hardest. It's the hardest. But once you go over that hump and you hit a hundred presentations, I promise you, it's like a breath of fresh air. I promise you'll be so proud of yourself for, for completing what you started. And um, at that point, your confidence and your comfortability level will be through the roof. You'll be a hundred percent and you'll feel like you can literally just go out there and call your shots. Not many careers you can go and the water heater breaks. Imagine this, the water heater breaks. Everybody in America, you know, everybody in America lives what? Paycheck to what? Paycheck to paycheck, right? So they're all paycheck to paycheck. So how much money does the average family have saved up right now in case of emergency? I think it's like $5,000, something crazy. The average family's expenses are $4,000 a month. Average family costs them $4,000 a month. Most families don't have $5,000 saved up. So if something happens one month, they're, they're stuck. Does that make sense? You know, the water heater goes, they're living paycheck to paycheck. They, they need to get another thousand dollars or else they're gonna have cold water in their house. The, the furnace goes, if they don't come up with $1,500, there's no heat for the winter, right? What do they do? What do you do? What do you do? You gotta call your boss and say, hey, can I get some overtime, right? And the boss can tell you what? No, <laughs> no, there's no overtime, I'm paying you enough. You know, Sean, right? So it's the way it is, reality, straight reality. The beautiful thing about this career is if your water heater breaks, you, you, you wanna take your family on an extra three day vacation, you're gonna be able to call your shots. You literally can say, you want to know what? I need to make an extra $1,500 this week. And because you didn't quit, because you didn't give up, because you're now comfortable and confident in your career, you can be like, no problem, babe. I'll just, I'm going to have to work maybe a little bit longer. I'm going to have to set a couple extra appointments this week. I might have to meet with a couple extra clients. So I'm going to stay in the home office instead of, you know, I might have to stay in my home office for a couple extra hours on a Tuesday night or something. But I'll pay for the water heater this week. I can get it done in one week. And I don't have to call and ask anybody for overtime. I make my own overtime. So the cool, is, the cool thing, guys, you're going to be able to have that control about your future for the rest of your life. Like anytime you don't want it to go, make a little bit extra coin, a little bit extra money, have a financial issue, by knowing that having the confidence and the control, you're going to be able to go out there and call your shots. So that's a cool thing about it. But after you finish your 100, you got to make that commitment right now. If anybody on this phone call is not going to be able to commit to giving 100 presentations, no matter how bad it quits, I don't care how bad you want to quit, I don't care. You're doing it on my dime, okay? I'm giving you the leads. How, many, how much money is it going to cost you to run all these leads when, I, when, you get, when you get through the training? Nothing, right? Leads cost $15 to $26 a piece. So if you get 100 leads, you're looking at about $2,000 investment for you to call into that you don't got to come up with no money out of your pocket, no money, right? So um, 
you're going to be able to do all that for your first two, three months. Now, how long is it going to take you to hit 100 presentations? How long would it take us to hit 100 presentations? I'm going to dive into that and into, let's do that right now while we've got the numbers in front of us. Let's see if this is a good one. So, you know, if you do 10 presentations a week, I don't know if you guys could even see that on the thing there, but 10, here's a, that's not even that good. Okay, there we go. 10 presentations a week, and you do that for 10 weeks, then you're going to hit 100 presentations, right? So how long is 10 weeks? That's 2.5 months. So that's typically how long you want to think it should take. Right now we're in June. So let's say that you train for the whole entire month of June. And then in July, you're able to go out on your own and, and you don't need your manager with you anymore. So now you're ready to start drumming up your hundred from that means you're going to have to go July, August and September. So by, by the end of September, you should have accomplished your 100 presentations. So right now you got to think that, oh boy, for the next few months, I'm going to be feeling uncomfortable. So what we have to do is we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's something that they told me at the beginning, that you're going to have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And that made a lot of sense to me. And it made me kind of, you know, go through the process a little bit more. So um, there's, there's, uh, there's four milestones that you can hit in your career. So you want to kind of put those four milestones down. The first milestone that we can hit, it's going to be when you get through this training and now you become an agent. Right now we're trainees. And, and when you go through, you, you are no longer a trainee. You're actually like a real agent. So I don't know if a best, you know, like Pinocchio, I'm a real boy <laughs> or uh, um, like a butterfly, you know, a butterfly finally gets through the cocoon and, and it gets its own wings and it can fly on its own, like a little bird getting released from its nest, kind of like that's kind of when you get through the training, you're able to actually go out on your own, set appointments with clients, run these meetings with the client, and you don't necessarily, you don't need anyone there with you anymore. So that typically takes two three weeks for most people in order to get through that training portion. And then once you get trained and you become an agent, that is the first milestone that you achieve. And let's just go back and look at what the heck you just did. Cause that's, that's not an easy feat. First of all, you had to get like, you had to, first of all, you had to get hired. You had to get hired. You know, we don't just hire anybody. Second of all, then you have to get your license. So congratulations on that, if I haven't told you guys already, because that's a feat in itself. Typically, they say one out of three people actually pass that test. So you're already beating some odds right there, you know? And I could even go back and talk about beating some odds. I mean, look at that little bird up there. So, you know, um, talk about being born, there's beating some odds. Being born in America, there's beating some odds, huh? Beating some major odds. Just being born and being born in America, we're already winning, right? And if you weren't born in America, you're in America now. So you already got, you already know what you're here for a reason. The reason you're in America right now is because the other country that you're in was not as good, right? You wanna know why I'm here? Because my family grew up in Italy, okay? And in and, and Italy, my family looked around and like, we need uh, to have an opportunity for our family to, to grow and, and have, and he's like, there's no opportunity in Italy. We live on a mountain. I mean, there's, you go to the water well every day. They're like, you know what we're gonna do? We have to send our youngest daughter to America on an arranged marriage to marry someone that she never met. We don't even know. He's you go marry this guy. And then, cause you wanna know why? Cause there's a better opportunity in America than there was in Italy, you know? So you guys are all here, you understand the, the, the opportunity that we have. Now we're in America and out of all the things that we can do, we could be a doorman, you know, we could, we could work at restaurants, we can, you know, do whatever. We actually got into sales. So congratulations on getting into sales, right? The best career in the world. Sales makes the world go round. It literally does. What do you think politics is? What do you think it is? Sales. Sales. I'm trying to sell you on my ideology, right? What do you think religion is? Sales. What do you think sales is? Sales. 
right? Everything sells. It really is a lot of it. So, so you're in it. You're in it. One of the best industries in the world. Now, all the things that we can sell, right? You can be sell. You can say, I want to be a car salesman. You can sell cars. You can sell jewelry, cell phones, suits, you know, shoes, all kind of stuff. Go business to business and sell um, water. People knocked on my door to try and sell me water it's a subscription the other day. You know, so all kind of stuff you can sell. We get to sell life insurance. One of the very few things that people truly, truly, truly need. People don't need a watch. I don't even wear watches. I can buy any watch I want. I don't even wear them. I feel like they're handcuffs on my wrist. They're too heavy. Have you ever wear a Breitling? You know how heavy a Breitling is? Like, I feel like it's a weight. Watches, jewelry, shoes, all that. People don't need that stuff. They don't need $250 pair of Air Jordan, Air Force Ones. You don't need that, right? People need this. And out of all the companies that sell life insurance, we just so happen to be with the best life insurance company on planet Earth. No company, I think about it, no company has more policyholders than Globe Life. No company has more policyholders than Globe Life. American Income Life was the number one in-home life insurance provider in the entire country. And now we're the number one virtual life insurance provider in the entire country. So what a blessing to even go through all of those hoops to finally be able to be on this call here today with our agency who we have an illustrious record and it's, I don't even like to talk about it because, but it's the truth. And I got to let you guys know where you're coming from. So, you know, uh, our agency where I come from it was, it was in Pittsburgh. Um, we broke all the records in the company. And, uh, you know, I, I personally have been on stage. I opened up 13 offices with this company, broke every record in this company history. So after all that, I did it in a small little Pittsburgh. They offered me the opportunity to come to Chicago, which is 10 times bigger than Pittsburgh. And I'm a Pittsburgh guy. I said, look, I'm still wearing Pittsburgh today. I can't even get rid of the stuff, you know? Um, and uh, I didn't want to come to Chicago. I didn't ever want to leave Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was my, my life. I was never going to leave Pittsburgh. Talk about a guy who's 37 years old, born and raised in Pittsburgh. I have a black and yellow Maserati. That's how much I love Pittsburgh. Everything in my life is black and yellow. Steelers, Pirates, Penguins, all black and yellow. I'm not leaving Pittsburgh. And they said, you got to go to Chicago. It's a great opportunity. So I looked at it, did a lot of research. Uh, and I, when I saw the, the numbers, it was astronomical. It was so much like, because I was already making a million dollars in Pittsburgh. So if I'm going to make a million dollars in Pittsburgh and you're going to send me to Chicago to make a million dollars, I just stay at Pittsburgh, right? Has to be a better opportunity. And I saw the numbers 10 times, 10 times the opportunity of Pittsburgh was Chicago. So I had to take that opportunity to go from good to give opportunity to be great. No guarantee when I come out here, there was none. And then when I come, there's a, there, I opened up this office, did all this stuff, took $85,000 and put it in to open up this office. Just so you guys know. 85,000 to open up. And then I, I'm like, let's go. And then the very next day, they're like, no, you're not going anywhere. In fact, the whole world stopped turning last night. Remember that day the world stopped turning, right? It was like March something. Last, yeah, March 12th, you got it. <laughs> that was like the week we kicked off business. So imagine us kicking off in, into that. They're like, nope, stop. You're not going anywhere now. And within nine days, the company made a complete transformation, went virtual, thank the Lord. And uh, we had to learn all that stuff. So March was a tra crazy transition month. We came into April and we kicked things off in April and we did over $100,000 in a week in our very first month in existence. Never has that ever happened in the history of the life insurance industry has an agency started and in the very first month of starting do a hundred thousand dollars of life insurance sales in one single week from direct life insurance sales business it's never happened before so we've we've changed the game from that point forward we set the bar high and we've been rocking and rolling every single month that we've been here in chicago we got a plaque and we were number one in our category number one in the company and um we've been really setting the bar high so um, you guys are coming into, I'm telling, I'm telling you guys, the right place at the right time. Um, as a whole, the industry is, a, is a, what, what do you talk, talk about a time of the life insurance industry, timing. Everybody right now, more than ever, is aware of the importance of life insurance. I mean, nothing like a global pandemic to make, make people realize mortality, right? 
it's sad, but people should have been thinking about that beforehand. You know, now this has happened. Life insurance applications in, in the world have gone up. People are like before you'd have to hunt people down, knock on their doors and convince them why they need life insurance. And we still need to do that today. But people are actually like going online and calling. They're calling our office. People never called my office for life insurance. They're calling the office saying, hey, we want to get some life insurance. Like, is this a joke? Is this a, some, is, is we getting punked here with you know, Ashton Kutcher or something, right? It never would happen before. But people are much more aware of the need for it now more than ever. It's right in their faces. So you guys, Oliver, starting a career right now with this industry, like, wow, you know? And then with our company, I mean, we're just, our company is just uh, very, very well advanced. They're, they're light years ahead of, 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 of a, lot, a, lot, a lot of stuff going on in the industry. So um, we're on the cutting edge of everything. Um, so the, uh, the four milestones, I don't want to get too off topic, okay? So let's knock them out real quick. The first milestone was what? When you become an agent, right? The second milestone is when you hit 100 presentations. So I keep going over that 100. That's the second milestone. That's when you hit your 100 presentations. The third milestone is when you uh, receive your first promotion. So the third milestone is when you receive your first promotion. Um, I'll get into that in one second on how to get your first promotion. But the fourth milestone is when you receive your first renewal check, which is in your 13th month. So the first one is when you become an agent. Second milestone is when you hit 100 presentations. Third milestone is when you receive first promotion. And the fourth milestone is when we receive our first residual income check, which is in your 13th month. Now, how do you uh, get your first promotion? Your first promotion. It's pretty, pretty straightforward on how to hit your 100 presentations, right? <laughs> pretty easy way to get your, your second milestone. Just give 100 presentations. Boom, you hit it. Your third milestone to get promoted is 24,000 over a 90 day period. So once you achieve that, now you're ready to be a supervisor. So for us here, let's say we train in June and then let's say in July, you do 8,000. August, you do 8,000. In September, you do 8,000. You just did 24,000 over a 90 day period. You'll be promoted uh, at the end of September. You don't have to wait that long. You can literally go out in July and just write 24,000 in July and get promoted at the end of July. You don't have to, you could do 12,000 in July, 12,000 in August, as long as you hit 24 over a 90 day period. Okay. Um, I've had some people come in and they, they hit like 20,000 over a 90 day period, but they had a bunch of personal recruits that they brought in, put them right in the leadership. No question about it. That makes sense. So you can either hit your 24,000, have no personal recruits and you get your promotion guaranteed. But if you're close and you got some personal recruits and you're ready to rock, then we're not going to slow you down. We're going to keep this thing moving. Right. Um, so uh, that should typically take about about 100 presentations. If you think about how long should it take you to do 100,000 or, or 24,000. Right. If you gave 100 presentations, I forget which one of these work. But if you gave 100 presentations, guys, how many sales should that get you? 33. Yeah, 33. Let's just call it 30 to be safe. 30. And if you have 30 sales, what's the average um, sale size, the deal size that we have here? $1,000. Yeah, the average sale that we get, guys, is about $1,000 a year of premium that they pay, which is like $82 a month or something like that. Okay. So the average client, maybe it's 84. The average client will pay about $84, which is about a thousand dollars a year. Right? So if we had 30 sales times a thousand dollars per sale, then how much business did you write? 30,000 and 30,000. How long did it take us to write this 30,000? It took us a hundred presentations is how long it really took us. So the question is, how long did it take us to do these hundred presentations though? Well, for, for, for one person, that could be six months <laughs> to do hundred presentations. They move a little bit slower. 
<laughs> right? They're working half the, the hours. They're not putting whatever it may be. Some people to do 100 presentations can be 10 weeks. They're doing 10 presentations a week. Some people to do 100 presentations can be five weeks. They're doing 20 presentations a week. So really just depends on that. But the average is 10 presentations a week. So at the average rate of 10 presentations a week, with 100 being the goal, that would take us 10 weeks. Well, if I did 100 presentations over 10 weeks, that means I would basically write 30,000 over 10 weeks, and I need to do 24,000 over basically two month, three months, that's 12 weeks. So the goal, the thing is, if as long as you hit your 100 presentations within your two, three month time frame, then you should also be hitting your 24,000 that you need to get promoted. Let's say your deal size is a little bit lower and it's not a thousand. Maybe you're only closing 800 per sale. None of these markers are working. I'm cursed with bad markers today. I'll find some better ones for this afternoon. Let's say your average deal size is 800 instead of a thousand. Well, 30 times 800 is what? Still 24,000. So the key is hitting a hundred presentations over a 90 day period should also mean that you're going to achieve your 24,000 and also achieve that third milestone, which is your first promotion. So that's how you get your first promotion to go from an agent to a supervisor is $24,000 of production over 90 day period. Make sense. Okay. Awesome. So those are some, some key things right there uh, on, on, on the first um, two weeks, then your first kind of three months, your first year, and then what do things look like now? So um, we'll go into this afternoon, what it's going to look like, you know, maybe year two, year three, how long does it typically take to achieve promotions? Uh, after you pick your head up 10 years, what, what you can expect to see, what that's going to look like for us. Um, we'll go all, over all that this afternoon. Uh, just to hit on a couple of things for the first few uh, weeks that'll help you guys out. Um, she mentioned it today, which is, I'm glad Natalie was here. Maybe you guys um, caught on what she said though, but she said, you want to get that playbook and, and treat it like the Holy Grail. So when you get your script and when you get all that information, you want to walk it and carry it around with you everywhere that you go and, and, and put all the pressure on the system and, and don't put any pressure on yourself right now. Cause you don't, you, you only have, you don't really have that much knowledge if you put, put any pressure on yourself. Okay. So the saying says, put all the pressure on your system. Don't put any pressure on yourself. That way, um, if something does go wrong, you can blame me. You can blame the system. And I'll take it and I'll fix it with you, you know? But if I give you the play, you go run out there and you don't run the play and it doesn't work for you, guess whose fault it is now? It's your fault because you try to, you know, make up your own system. You're put now. You're putting all the pressure on yourself, and I can't really help that. That's the, so put all the pressure on the system. Put all on the system. I wanted to do that myself, because when I came in, they explained to me. They said, you know, they were like, Tommy, this business is all input output. Like literally, if you do this, then you're going to get this. If you push this button, this is going to happen. You know, if you do ten of these, you're going to get four of these. You know, and they they like gave me all this input and output, right? And I wanted to test it to see if they were right. And I wanted to really put this thing to a test. So um, I wanted to basically tell the guy, say, I want to make this much money. And my goal was $200,000 a year. I thought that if I can make $200,000 a year, that it would change everything for my family forever. Like I thought it would just be the most amazing thing. So I saw that that was about an MGA in this business. MGAs were making five, six thousand dollars a week, which is well more than two hundred that I, I wanted to make. So uh, he told me that if you want to do that, then you're going to have to do all of this. And he's like, you got to do this, then you got to do this, then you got to do this, then you got to do this, and then after you do all that, then you got to do this, 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 and, and basically you got to do from A all the way to Z. If you do all twenty six steps, you can pick your head up. You'll be an MGA, and you'll be making five, six, six thousand dollars a week, right? So I literally, guys, I wanted to do everything they told me to do 
And so that, just so that at the end of the year, if I came in and I went to my leader, I was like, you told me if I did this, I'd make 200,000. And, and, and if I made anything less than what they told me, I literally wanted to be able to blame them. You know, I wanted to blame the system. Okay. Well, here's what happened. I did everything they told me to do so that at the end of the year, I could blame him for me not working. Isn't that kind of messed up? Well, I did everything they told me to do. And at the end of the year, I made more money than they told me I was supposed to make. So I couldn't blame anybody. Right. I didn't want to show up at the end of the year and say this. You told me that I'm going to be making $200,000. I did everything you told me to do, and I'm not making $200,000, right? And I didn't want him to go back to me, my leader at the time, and be like, well, guess what? I told you to do this. You didn't do that. The playbook said to do this. You completely did the opposite. Over here, we everybody was doing this, and you decided to do that. Well, then I'm like, I guess I can't ask you for my 200 because I didn't follow the system 100% to the T. You know, I didn't want him to come back to me and be like, nope, you can't get it. You don't get it. Just like Willy Wonka, right? At the end, he thought he, no, he cheated. He cheated. He wasn't supposed to, he drank this, the bubbly stuff. You, you know what I'm saying? You guys ever see uh, the new Wonder Woman movie? What is it? WW 1984? Is that what it is? Did you see it? The most recent one, at the beginning of the movie, she's a young girl before she was ever superwoman and she's competing in these games. And at the end, she ends up like um, winning. She's winning the race. And then something happens to her during the race to where she gets off course and she takes a shortcut and kind of cheats. But at the end, she gets to the beginning and she's about to win this crazy tournament. And her mom tackles her in the middle and says, no, you're not allowed to win. And she gets mad at her mom. Like, how come you're not letting me win? She said, back there, you went through a shortcut and you took a shortcut. You're not allowed to win. What a lesson to learn as a child, right? Because now she's going to grow up and learn that you can't cheat and win, right? So in this business, nobody's going to be watching you all the time. You can do whatever you want, right? But your results are going to be watching. There's the grind gods up there. They're watching. They can see what you're doing at night. They can see what you're doing. And the ones that are doing the right things, you're going to see them on stage getting the right results. And the ones that, that don't, they're going to be pondering in the back. Like, I wonder what happened. Well, when you were supposed to, the playbook said that you had to do this. You skipped three steps. You skipped three steps, right? So that's where I didn't want it to all end at the end of the year. Be like, dude, you did everything except these two things. So no, no 200,000 for you. Like, I didn't want that to be. I wanted to be like, no, I did everything right. Where's my money? And the fact is, I did everything right, and the money was already in my bank account plus what I was supposed to get, you know? So that's the cool thing about the business. You put all the pressure on the system. And if you don't get the right results, you're not doing it right. It's not the system. It's you, you know? That's how you got to take it. You always got to take it that way. So I learned that in sports and, 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 and stuff. Like, if I didn't get the right results, I never thought that, the coach was telling me the bad thing or, you know, I just don't got it. I just figured I wasn't doing it the right way. I went back to the drawing board, figured it out and applied it back in there. So that, that was helpful. Putting all the pressure on a system, not yourself. Um, the system is the script. You know, the script is what everything's going to revolve around. Do everything, not so that it's just going to benefit you, but do it as like, so um, learn this script because tomorrow you're going to need to call somebody with it. Okay, you're going to learn it, right? But learn this script because tomorrow I'm going to have you teach 100 people how to use this script. Now, how are you going to learn it? You're going to learn it a lot more, typically, typically. Some people might say, no, I care more about myself than 100 people. But for most people, you know, you're going to be like, oh, I need to learn it for myself. I got this. I'll, I'll be able to handle it. And you're going to learn it. But if you know that you have 100 people you're going to have to teach, think about the level that you're going to learn it now. So when you're learning the knowledge here, don't just learn it for your own ability. Learn it because you know one day you're going to be having to teach it to a whole, whole bunch of other people. Even if you're not, just put that in your mentality, you know, that. So it puts a lot of more um, pressure and emphasis on it. Uh, a couple of things that really helped me catapult my career, guys, 
is I brought 10 personal recruits in my very first month. This was July of 2008. I was 24 years old. I turned 25 that month. So I turned 25 on July 28th. I was in the field making sales on July 28th on my birthday. Promise you that. Promise you that. Making sales on my birthday. I turned 25. On my first month, I brought in 10 personal recruits. And it just made me step my game up. I was like, oh, man, I got my buddy coming in from college. My dad's best friend from work. His son just graduated college. He came aboard with us. So I'm like, I can't let these people down. So it intang like it intangibly like hit me from the inside and sh like lit a fire in me that could have never been lit any anywhere else. You know, I took my career to the next level by doing that, but also it catapulted my career because I had 10 people coming in the door. So I got put right in the leadership and my team just started growing automatically. So um, I got a zero dollar recruit for that zero dollar personal recruit bonus. They give you no money back in the day. So I just brought people in just because I wanted to build my team and I wanted to go and I saw the numbers on the board. For us, you guys got a way better opportunity. Now the bonuses for the supervisors, all the leaders are way better. Um, and there's a personal recruit bonus. So it would be, it would be messed up for me to not tell you about it. You know, they are giving $750 for each person that you bring in for your first 90 days. And that's it. After 90 days, it goes down to $250. Well, still is nothing to bat your eye about. It's still a good number, 250 per person. But you know, my dad told me, he said, you better get the money while the getting is good. Get it while the getting's good. You ever hear that? Well, you only got 90 days and you only live once. What are we living inside a box for? Let's go out there. Let's be relentless. Let's be reckless and bring everybody you possibly can. And you only got 90 days. What's going to happen? You're going to hurt. Nobody's going to get hurt. You know, we're not hurting nobody here. We're helping. If I can't help you, I'm not going to hurt you. You know? So um, huge opportunity for you guys. Plus, what will happen is if you brought 10 people in like I did, you'd have $7,500 extra dollars in your bank account that I didn't have. Boy, that's going to give you a nice cushion into your new career, you know, having to go out there and meet people and make sales. You're not going to have to worry about like, oh, I, need, I really need to sell this person because I need to make money. You're, you're good. And you know what people buy off of people that aren't trying to sell them? You don't want to be looking at clients like, like they're dollar signs, you know, like they can literally, you're, you're, they're looking at you like doing your dies turning to dollar signs, right? Or you ever hear this one where they say, um, you got commission breath? You know, those salespeople, you, you could tell, you could tell who's on commission, you know, right? You don't want to be like that. You don't want to be all pushy. Like, what's this guy trying to sell me so bad for? We don't sell, we serve here, guys. Our motto is to serve, not to sell. You know, and, and a lot of times I find that if I have somebody not making sales, guess why? Because they're trying to make sales and they end up not making them because they're trying to sell them. But when you work on serving people, the sales come automatic because people can see that. The motto in the business says that the more people that you serve and the better that you serve them, the more income you're going to make. The less people that you serve and the worse that you serve them, well, your income is going to go down. So you don't want, you want to serve, it's quantity and quality. You want to serve a lot of people and you want to serve them really well, right? That means you're helping people. So, um, so that, that, that really helped my, my mindset there uh, was bringing, the, bringing people in and it made me step my game up. For us here, you guys have a greater opportunity now because you literally can um, get paid pretty, pretty handsomely for that. And also, if you bring a personal recruit in, the production that they do um, will count towards the production that you need for convention. So I mentioned agency meeting today. I mentioned that we have convention every year. Next year's Las Vegas. It's typically 96,000 to qualify. Um, everyone here should be starting halfway through the year now. So it should be right around like 46,000, I believe is the number. Double check on that for yourself, 46,5, whatever that is. 46,5, there it is. 93,000 for the year, is that correct? 93,000 for the year. So 46,5 is pretty much directly half of that, you know? So um, uh, definitely make sure you guys know, you know, what those numbers are and, and what you got to do to, to achieve that and get to the, the, those goals. Um, but, but when you bring in a personal recruit, they can count for half of your numbers. So just for instance, you know, you need 46, five, right? So if you brought in, um, one personal recruit 
up to $10,000 of their production will count towards your numbers. So if you brought in one personal recruit, they're, they're going to write 30, 40 grand. 10,000 of their business will count towards your numbers. So you have one, then, then you brought in another one. There's another 10,000. So now you got 20,000 counting towards your numbers. All you got to do now, instead of writing 46,000, now all you got to write is what? 26,000 for a trip to Las Vegas, all expenses paid for. And our company does not spare a dime. First class, high class, five star, whole way. You don't, don't you, I mean, you technically don't even need to bring your credit card or any money. Like it's all paid for, literally. You're going to be in Vegas, so you're going to want to probably going to want to bring some money and stuff, but it's all paid for. Uh, you're going to be at the, at the, um, the casino. What's what's the, the Caesar's palace. They put us right at the Caesar's palace. It's, it's not the one where the real Caesar used to live. Okay. Uh, but the Caesar palace there, um, and all expenses paid for, for you and a guest. So pretty, pretty darn awesome for sure. So you can, you know, by bringing in those personal recruits and it counts towards your numbers, which they never did that before us either, you know? So those are um, things that help me and uh, the last thing, you know, we'll touch on before we break here and, and let's just game plan our break here. Oh, look at this. Did I say two o'clock, right? I mean, keep an eye on this. So we'll take a break from like two till 2.20. Cool, two, two, maybe 2.25 or something. Whenever we get a break, we'll take a 20 minute break. So as soon as we stop here, 20 minutes from that, boom, we'll hop back on. I'm gonna get a nice charged up marker. Make sure you guys can see the board. Maybe I'll move it. Can you guys see the board real quick? Can you guys see the board? Kind of. Okay. Okay, let's do a quick pull, pull up. Let's pull, pull up a little bit. Isn't there a song called that? I pull up. Pull up right? right? Yeah. You probably don't know it, Sean. I know it. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah. It's a young song. With, like, it's a rap song. song. <laughs> I pull up. You know it? Yeah. Okay, Sean knows it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, how about this? Is this too close now? It's like right in my face. No, I got anything in my teeth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can see the board better now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not that much older than you, boss. Okay. All right. I'm only 43. You're 37. All right. You got it. <laughs> so the good thing about AIL is it keeps you young. This business will definitely keep, keep you young for sure. Um, so all right, to wrap up here, guys, to wrap up, you know, um, the, uh, my story. So, you know, I started with the company back in 2008. Prior to that, I was a financial advisor and, and I did all that. And I came in here in 2008, my first month, I wrote $24,000 in business. Cause you know what they told me, they said, Tommy, you got to do 24,000 in order to get promoted. You got to do it over three months. And my manager kind of mapped it out. He's like, so if you work in July, August, and September, you can be promoted by then. And I was like, I was like, that's cool. I mean, but if I could get it done faster, I'd like to get it done faster. And I put my head down and I worked my butt off. Um, and I think I was just really, really appreciative to have leads because where I was from, we didn't have any leads. So I was spending cold time, cold call and prospecting. So I went out and saw tons of people that month. I, I was an hour and a half away from my house, two hours away in Johnstown. So I was driving or Uniontown. I was driving an hour and a half, two hours every single day to my area, and then two hours back to my house every day for the entire month. And my goal for the month of July was to do 30,000. And then I went in my car and I was like, there's only 31 days in July. That means you're gonna have to do like a thousand dollars a day. What did you just sign up for? Because I committed. They said, what are you gonna do this month? I said, I'm gonna do 30,000. Everybody probably was like, this is his first month. He can't do 20. You know? so, so I went work really hard, guys. I ended up doing 24,000 the month of July. But my goal was 30, so I failed. You're looking at a failure. I'm a big failure, to be honest with you. I fail constantly, constantly. Like I probably fell weekly, daily, monthly. Every year I fell. I failed, I failed 12 years in a row, literally. Because my goals are always so much bigger than I ever hit. So my goal was 30,000 and I failed at hitting my goal, but you know what I hit? 24,000. You know where that put me? Number one agent for the month, failing. You see what I'm saying? I want you to make yourself a failure by the goals that you set. You know, it's okay to fail because your goals are so big that no matter what, 
you never win. I can't win anything, guys, because like I'll make my goal so big and I'll never achieve it. I'll never achieve my goal, guys, because it's always going to be so big. But when I walk out of my like in my house, I'm like, you're a failure. You were supposed to do 30 and you only did 24. But when I walk out of the door and I walk into the office, everybody's like, way to go. You did it. I'm like, did what? I failed. I didn't even come close to my goal. What do you see? You know, everybody else in the world, you're going to be crushing it. Everybody else is like, wow, look at that. You better slow down. Like, slow down. I need to speed up. I need to get my goal. Most people, you're going to be doing way more than they ever thought because they didn't even thinking like that. They say you want to aim for the stars. And worst case, you're going to land on the moon. Have you ever heard that one before? So my trick, my trick in this business, nothing to do with skills. I don't have a magic bullet. I don't have a script. I wish I could give you some words to say that are going to just change your life. The what has set me apart was my thinking and my goal setting from the beginning. I literally just thought bigger than the person next to me. I can't make it any easier, like any, any simpler than that. It's not easy, simple. It's not easy to think big. It's hard to think big. It's really hard. You have to develop a habit of thinking big. You really do. Like you got to go there. And, and then when you go there, you got to like think really hard about how you're going to go further. Like think about a big number, you know, think about it. Like what would it take for you to make a quarter million dollars? Think about that. What is that? What's a quarter million dollars? Working 40 hours a week, that's $125 an hour. That's a that's $125 an hour. Never you can never make that at any job. No way, any regular job ever, you're going to make a quarter million dollars. Never. The only part, I, one, one friend of mine who graduated college, he's super, super successful. He makes about a quarter million dollars but he also has to travel to China for eight months out of the year and doesn't see his family. So if you do want to make a quarter million, they're out there, but you're going to be doing some stuff, major sacrifices, and they're going to have you by the kahuna, as he said, right? They're going to have you by whatever you want to call it, by the neck, and they're going to tell you, go here, go here. Oh, no, no bathroom breaks. You want to take a vacation? No, you're out of vacation days, right? So like, oh, we pay you a quarter million dollars. Be here, do this, go here, do that, do this. We pay you a quarter million dollars. You do whatever I tell you to do, right? That's what it takes to make a quarter million dollars out there, just so you know. That's $125 an hour. I want you to think about that. Can you think about making 125 an hour right now? I want you to think about that. Come on, think about that, right? What would you do if you made $125 an hour? What would you do? Would you go cut your grass for two hours? That would cost you $250 of your time. Why don't you just pay somebody 50 bucks and you're plus 200? See what I'm saying? And got kid, that kid that you paid 50 bucks for, he wanted to cut your grass anyways. He needs the money. That's a win-win situation. I don't want to cut it. He wants to cut it. Boom, right? Now, can you think about making 500,000? Because now you're making $250 an hour. So if you had a tough time conceiving 125 an hour, think about how hard it's going to be for you to think about $250 an hour. $250 an hour. That's big. Now you got to think about a million dollars a year is $500 an hour. Most people don't even go that far in their brain to think like that because it's too much. It's like too much. It's they start having like misfiring. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 what's on TV tonight? Dancing with the stars? What's on, or, or is it, is it the mass singer? Like they'd rather worry about the mass singer than use the brain power to think big because it takes a lot of energy to think big. And those people don't want to go there and they don't even give them the promotion. Why would I think big? I don't even, I'm never going to make a million dollars. This is a waste of my time right now. This is a waste of my time even thinking about making a million dollars. So I, they don't even go there because they don't even give themselves permission to think big. You're not even allowed to think big because you're never going to make it anyways. Most people think they're never going to make it. They don't give themselves permission to think big and they don't even think big. And it doesn't cost you any money to think big. If you're going to think, you're going to think small. You're going to think, what's it cost me to think about making a million dollars or to think about dancing with stars for the night? What's it? No more energy. No more energy. 
If you're writing your goals down, how much more energy does it take to add one more zero? And nobody does it though. Nobody does it. Anytime somebody comes to me with their goals, I add another zero automatically. I don't even know what your goals are going to be. I know what I got a one-on-one -on -one with John. When he comes in here, no matter what he puts on that sheet of paper, I'm putting another zero on it. And we're going to wrap our brains around how we're going to make that happen. You know, when you think big, get there. It's hard. You're going to work really hard, guys. And you're going to think big, 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 big. And here's the challenge. When you get to that point where you're like, dude, I don't even know if I could think any bigger. You ready? Ready? Ready for it? Double it. Double it. Think as big as you possibly can think and then double it. Right? That right there is the start of success without even doing anything. Most people don't think that. And then after they think it, they don't write it down. They don't write it down. Right? That's the beginning of achievement. Everything was created twice. First in our brains, then in reality. You know, we have to create it here before it ever materializes in real life. Most people don't give themselves to even think big. And then when they think big, yeah, that was a cool thought, but let's go back to seeing what's, uh, who won the Logan Paul fight, you know? They're like, let me go, let's, let's watch the Logan Paul fight on to see who won between Lloyd, Floyd Mayweather. They're more interested to see what's going on in the NBA playoffs because they, they thought about it for a second, but they had to go back to what everybody, go there, stay there, and then do what nobody does, write it down. Write it down. You're 80 times more likely to achieve something if you write it down. And in fact, you already did it. The thing is, like, when, when you think about you doing something and then you write it down, you already did it. If people are like, well, uh, how, you know, um, how you know you're going to hit this number? How you know you're going to do that? How do I know I'm going to do it? I already did it. What do you mean? I already wrote it down. It's going to happen. See? I didn't really do it, but I wrote it down. And that's the same thing as make it happen, right? So I just want to tell you that the biggest tool that I had in my tool belt was nothing anybody taught me. It wasn't a skill set. It wasn't a close. I got the same script you got coming in. I got the same products on that I was selling. You're saying we're all selling the same stuff, right? What's the difference then? If I got the same script, the same coach, the same environment, same leads, the same everything, the same products, how come some people are doing this with it and some people are doing this with it? all up here they're thinking bigger they're on some different stuff man up here you know so um just set some bigger goals for your 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 your, your career and and it's all pat math and i can help you work the path to get to those goals if you tell me i want to be at this point by this time and i want to you know make this amount of money whatever your number is wherever you want to be i can work the numbers backwards with you guys and help you get there because it's all math. And then, then what we'll do is we'll break it down to the, to the input and just make sure on a daily basis, we're doing the input. And then at that point, it, is it going to happen in a day? No, it's not going to happen in a day. You know, they say leadership doesn't happen in a day or success doesn't happen in a day, but it happens in what we do daily. So what we can do is develop a daily game plan and just make sure we're inputting this. And sure enough, you're not going to shed those 30 pounds in a day. You're not going to put all that lean muscle on in a day. You're not going to increase your speed in a day. You're not going to increase your vertical in a day. But if we keep doing these things daily, you're going to be an elite performer eventually, right? So that's all, man. Um, I went off a little tangent, talk too long. I tend to do that sometimes. I do apologize. So let's check the script here. Is it 210? 211. All right. So... Um, I figured if I went on a little bit of tangent, I'm probably going to take it to 210. We could break it 230. So let's come in at 230, 231. We'll give it 231. Give it an extra minute. Okay. Gives everybody 20 minutes. Go get some fresh air. Go outside. If you're at your house right now, get some fresh air. Get off this screen, man. You can't have too much screen time in, in your face either. So uh, I'll see you guys in about 20 minutes or so. All right. Thanks. I'll just mute this up too. So nobody hears us.
Thanks, Mason. All right, guys, so I stepped away and came back. Is it working? Yes, I see some heads nodding. Let me make sure we're in the right Samsung. Okay. What do you think of this microphone? How got for, for you guys up there? What do, what do you guys th think of the mic? Is it it's okay? Great. It's great. Pretty good, okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't get any money for this, but I think it's a good mic too. Um, because you can walk around and I can turn and go onto the board. And normally if I'm talking into the microphone and you turn your head away from it, you know, or if, if I was like, like looking at the board and talking, you wouldn't be able to hear me, but now I can move around. I don't have to be focused on like where I'm actually talking. You can be yourself a little bit more. So that's the benefit of having this, um, uh, this portable like mic on, on, on your thing here. So picking up where we left off, you know, uh, I, I was going over where in my first month in the career, the, um, the effort that I put in the results that I ended up getting, you know, I wrote 24,000 that first month, July, 2008, and I brought in 10 personal recruits. So this is kind of interesting because everyone here is starting training the very first week of June. Typically you're right around this first week of June here. That's when I started training. So you guys should all kind of get out in your first month. It's going to be probably July, but this will be 2021, right? So I'd like to throw the challenge out there already. Just this is off the top of my head. I'm like, Hey, that's the number, you know, 24,010 personal hires, 10 personal recruits hired all those 10 people that hired didn't all start with me because some of them end up not getting their license. They just never end up getting through the whole licensing course. Most of them did. So um, that's a little quick challenge out there. All right, so that catapulted me to be a supervisor. So July agent, number one agent in the agency. Um, on my desk, I don't have any, I usually never have any awards on my desk. The only award I ever kept on my desk at all times was the July 2008 number one agent award was the most important award my whole entire career because that was the foundation you know that i was able to now build upon because my expectations for myself were high at that point you write twenty four thousand your first month i made twelve thousand dollars my first month I'm doing six thousand a week in production uh, and and when i trained you guess what i was expecting you to do the same thing. I was like, I'm doing it. You'd say the same words I'm saying. You're going to get the same results. Come on, let's get. So everybody, I was training my expectations for them since my expectations for myself were so high that my expectations for them naturally were to be high. You know, so it's funny how you'll live up to your own expectations. You know, people will live up to your expectations. You know, if you grow up and you have kids and stuff, you know, hold them to the highest expectations possible. Like I expect 100%, not 99 like my son said, daddy, I like land. I want to get a Lambo. He's six years old. They don't even know what they're talking about. Right. But I want to educate him from when he's young. 
you know? And, and my response to that was like, if you want a Lambo, you can have a Lambo, okay? But in order to have a Lambo, you have to score 100% on your test. If you get 99% son, and you get one wrong, no Lambo. You gotta be in the one percenters. The one percenters are the top 1%. That's who drives Lambos. So that means you can't get 99s because that puts you where? In the 99%. So I'm trying to teach my son from the beginning, you can't be in the 99%. 99% don't drive Lambos. One percenters drive Lambos. That's scoring 100% on the test, you know? So I kind of just told my son that from the beginning, but the expectations are now, you know what his expectation is, it's excellence. It's the absolute best. You know, if I've got to hang this TV on the wall, explain to me why it would be crooked when I have the opportunity to make it straight. Isn't that crazy though, that somehow things will be off. They'll be a little bit crooked. Like this thing, I don't even got to look at it, but I already know what's going on with it. It's a little bit off. I wish you guys, I'm going to change it for a minute. But if you look at this thing right here, it's a little bit off. This edge, if you measure the centimeters here and the centimeters here, they're off, okay? I just want you guys, I can point that out in a second because I look for perfection and expect perfection in everything that we do. And these pictures that are in this office are no different. <laughs> why would it be off if it could be right? Like, why would you get 99 if there's a possibility for it to get 100, you know? So that's just like having high expectations for yourself, your team, your people, your family, the people you surround yourself with and all that. Um, so going into my second month, I was a supervisor, 10 people started. My third month, I actually became a manager. My people that started, they end up becoming supervisors. So I became the manager. So what happens is if you know how to become a supervisor, guess what I can teach you how to do? I can teach you how to become a supervisor. You know how I can teach Enrique how to do it? Cause I just did it, <laughs> you know, I just became a supervisor. So if I just become a supervisor, guess what I know how to do? I know how to be a supervisor. Therefore I can teach him how to do it. If I can teach you how to be a supervisor, then guess what I get to do? I get to be the manager. You get to be the supervisor, right? And guess what we just did? We created opportunity because now we both step up. Now other people can step in. Now you have two, three agents. They're able to come in. We're able to change and change their life and influence a whole bunch of other people right there. So now you have three agents. You're the supervisor. Guess what I am now? I'm the manager. How did I get to be the manager? I got to be the manager because I worked my way to become a supervisor and I taught you how to become a supervisor. I developed another leader. You develop, developing yourself is, is a agent thing. Developing others is a leadership thing. So hence, that's why you are now in leadership because you've proven that you can develop others. So if, if you can develop someone to do 24,000 over a 90 day period and they wanna be a supervisor, I got people that do what 24,000 in, in, in a month and they don't, want to be supervisors. Not everybody wants to be in leadership, needs to be in leadership. You know, some people want to be in leadership. Some people don't. I have people that'll crush the numbers, but never really get into it yet or down the line they might. So, but if you got someone that does 24,000 and they become a supervisor, now you are a manager. You are their manager. You're their manager. Okay. So there's some numbers that are involved and I'm going to show you the numbers as well on like to guarantee you your promotions, which is cool here. This ain't like, I like you, you're my aunt. Let me put you over here. You're my uncle. You're my cousin. Can't do that. Can't do that. You know, um, it's all promote promotions are all results based. You hit your numbers, boom, you get promoted. Last month we had a tons of people get promoted. Another month had some more people. We had people getting promoted almost every single month this year, knocking out their goals. So what's nice to know is that the team is really good at hitting their numbers and doing, and then they're able to teach other people how to hit their numbers really well. So that's, that's nice. I'm going to go over this with us, but um, to, uh, to go to the, 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 the GA position, that's a manager. So talk about terminology real quick. We got an agent. Just look at it. Let's just write it down. You got an agent, you got a supervisor, you got a manager, you got a general manager, you got a regional manager. 
just like any company, really. <laughs> I think IBM has all those positions. You know, Walmart got them. Starbucks got them, right? Starbucks got a barista, don't they? You know who the barista got? Shift manager, right? Who's the shift manager report to? The manager. Who's the manager report to? The general manager, right? Who's the general manager report to? The regional. Who's the regional report to? The district. Who's the district report to? The, the I don't know, the state, <laughs> you know? Everybody reports to somebody at some level, except them people are in corporate America. Them people get paid by the hour. They get paid salary. They get told what they're worth. You know, that would be that would kind of stink if somebody tells you what you're worth. You're a human being. We just watched a video today on Steve Jobs. He just told us what it was about. Life ain't nothing made up of people that are no smarter than we are. So why should we tell the person who's not even smarter than me tell me to tell me what I'm worth? I'm gonna go out there and build what I'm worth over time. Even if I gotta start from scratch, I'd rather work 365 days, seven days a week, 24 hours for myself than 40 hours a week for somebody else. Make sense, right? So what's cool now is you become a manager in this business because you earned it and you, you build up, you hit the numbers, you, hit, you, go, you, go, you go up to the manager. Now you're a manager, you have a supervisor. Well, guess what? If your supervisor is good, at teaching their agents how to what become a supervisor because they should be pretty good at because guess what they just did they just became supervisors and guess what you just did you just taught them how to become supervisors so you're good at teaching other people how to become supervisors right that's why you're a manager so you can teach them how to teach their people how to become supervisors they can teach their people how to become supervisors. Why? Because they just did it. You can teach them how to teach people how to become supervisors because you just taught him how to become a supervisor. Is this making sense? I might lose you here, right? So we're all good at what we're, what we're supposed to be doing. And you're good at it because you just did it. So if you stay in, the, in, in there and you just stay engaged and you lock in, you're going to get better and better and better, you know? So what was nice for me is when I was a supervisor, I was training people training i trained one person maybe two people but my hands were pretty full so i can only grow so fast well when i became a manager i promoted two people to become supervisors so imagine now instead of me doing all the training by myself now i had me plus two other people to help me train so the team was able to grow like three times as fast because we had three. So look, think about how fast the team really can start growing. So my goal was like, oh my gosh, I need to develop more leaders because if I could have 10 leaders, imagine how fast the team will grow now. If I could train one person a month even, well, I'm only going to grow by three people a month if I got three leaders. But if I can grow by 10 people a month, you know, and we have two training classes per month. So technically you can train one person per training class, which is two people per month, and it not really be that overwhelming to where you're just completely bogged down, right? And always remember this though, there's always gonna be kind of two stresses in the business. You're either gonna be stressed out because you have so much going on. You got so much going on. You got, uh, you're in leadership now and, and you got a leadership meeting you got to be at in the morning and then you have a team and your one agent wants to meet with you to go over his thing. You have to slide that in your schedule. Plus you got two new people that are starting training class next week. You got three people that are in training class now. You know, you got to do three hires. You wanted to call and get this new personal recruit wants to get a hold of you. You're like, he, he wants me to go to lunch. I don't even know I'm going to go to lunch. Maybe I could get go to breakfast with him tomorrow or something like that. I'll slide him in for coffee. You're going to be so busy and like, ah, I'm, I'm stressed, right? Or you're going to be not having no appointments. Nobody's on your team. You're, you don't got no meetings to go to and no reason to be at them. <laughs> You got nothing going on. Like for me, everybody would be like, Tommy, why are you always meeting with your people? And why are you having these meetings all the time? And I'm like, you don't got anything to meet about? 
my business, I, I got stuff to meet about all the time. We got so much going on. I, I don't know how I would get anything done if I didn't communicate and meet, you know? So you're going to be stressed out because you don't got nothing going on. No appointments, no, no interviews, no person. You don't got no personal recruit bonus coming in, nothing. And, and that'll be stressful. So you're going to pick, what do you guys want? What kind of stress do you want? Do you want the stress where it's just nothing or do you want the stress where it's all, because it's probably never going to be like this perfect like situation at the beginning at least. But as you get into the business, I promise you that when you get, and I'm going to go over this with us, when you get to the position that I worked hard for me, eight months to do this, eight months. I started in July of 08. By March of 09, I got promoted to an MGA. I spent six months as a manager six months as a manager. And I told myself, I don't want to go to the MGA position until I know what I'm doing and, and until I hold it down as a GA first. So I told myself, you got to be the number one GA before you're allowed to go be an MGA. And that was like just a thing I put on myself because I, you know, what's going to happen is I don't want my career to end and be like, all right, you're a number one, this number one agent, you were number one essay. You're never number one GA. And I'm like 20 years in the business. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back and be a GA. And I don't know if you'll ever go back to be a GA just so I can scratch that off. So if you're going to do it, do it right. Cause there's no going back. If you're going to be the agent, rock it as the agent position and then psh, retire respectively, you know, with a couple, you know, stripes on your shoulder. Then when you go to the essay, same thing, rock it as the essay, but at the same time, don't take too much time in there. You know, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I gave somebody, they asked me, I said, when you were a supervisor, what did you do as a supervisor? And, and my advice was I, I stopped being a supervisor as quick as possible, which means I went to the GA, you know, I spent as little time as I could there. But for the MGA position, I knew how valuable it was. You know, that's a quarter million dollar a year position. They call it like the NFL, right? When you go to the NFL, you don't kick back. Now it's time to really turn up. So I wanted to make sure I was ready to go. So in March of 2009, I got promoted to an MGA. And I spent my first year that year just building my MGA team. Well, my first year, I made like 120,000 just getting to that position. My second year, I made a little bit over 200,000 as an MGA. But I was still working a lot, uh, building my first year up. In my third year, I end up promoting three of my managers, my GAs, to MGAs. So they all got promoted in my third year to MGAs. So now I was the RGA that I was overseeing these MGAs. Okay. And just keep in mind, I'm going to show you what the bonuses are. My bonus was 20% of whatever they did, 20%, right? Now the bonus is it will be 105%, 100%. Think about it, it's five times, right? So, you know, that was my third year with the company. I became an RGA, had three MGAs, plus I was still an MGA myself, okay? Just like you guys realize, uh, whenever you're an MGA or an, or an RGA, you're also an MGA. Geo, for instance. Geo is an MGA. Geo is an MGA. Vince was his GA. Vince got promoted to an MGA at the beginning of this year. So now Vince and Gio are both MGAs, but Gio is also Vince's RGA because he promoted them, he developed them. They're working together from day one. Does that make sense? So now Gio operates as an RGA and helps coach and train and still work with Vince, you know? And, but he also still has his MGA team that he's still running right now, he's developing. So Gio has two and two managers on his MGA team. His managers, his GAs right now are Austin and Melissa. And they're the two GAs. And they're working right now. And Austin and Melissa are right around the corner from them getting promoted to MGAs. And when they get promoted to MGAs, then he'll be their RGA as well. And he'll still have a team that he's still building and running and developing. So that makes sense, that process there. And I'll show you how it all, all shows on numbers here in a second. So from that point forward, I continued to grow my RGA team and I just kept promoting MGAs. And before you know, I was an RGA with a bunch of MGAs that I was running. The thing is, it was all physical. What I mean by that is I had to drive to all these locations. 
So we had an office in Erie, which was two hours north. I had an office in State College, three hours east. I had an office in um, Scranton, which was five hours, an office in King of Prussia. We had an office in um, Wheeling, Pennsylvania. We had an office, or uh, Wheeling, West Virginia. We had an office in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, Maryland, Florida. So now I'm traveling to all these offices to run my teams and all that, you know? Opened up 13 offices over 12 years, right? And I mean, pretty much did anything you could possibly do with the company, right? So I was set up and then, you know, now we're here and we have the same opportunity, but I can just promise you it is so much better. I wish, right, I, I could take, I, I, I should do a video on just like what it was and what it is now, just to show somebody what, what the differences are. It's, it's absolutely amazing. A couple of them, the personal recruit bonus, we already talked about that, right? You're gonna see some of these bonuses that the managers get. They weren't like this when I was coming in. So just to think like I made 500,000 my third year. If the bonuses were like they were today, I would've made like 800,000, <laughs> crazy. All right, so um, I think he said that the black one was the, the good one or we'll find out here in a second. We're gonna use some numbers here. Let's go into it. At least you guys ready to go into some numbers? Yeah. Uh, good. I, can you hear me? So how many presentations should we give on a weekly basis? No. All right, I'm hearing tens over here. We're gonna go with 10. Out of 10, how many would enroll on average? Three. I'll tell you, it should be more, four. There, there, I mean, our, our agency is looking like it's more like four. We're up closing about 40%. I just wanna under promise. Okay, on top of this, Average sale would be 800 ALP. So I'm like turning around on you guys with my back here to you, which is about $67 a month. So we're assuming now that the average client is not paying $1,000 a year. The average client is paying $800 a year, $67 a month. Okay. And we're, we're, we're selling 10, three, 800 for a total of, let's see if we can fit that on the screen. I think we can do that. 2,400 ALP for the week. We know that would typically make us half on the upfront, okay? So we'd make about $1,200 for the week, which is $60,000 a year. That's with these numbers here. Now, obviously what we can do is you can always play. You can always say, well, what if I see more people a week? Well, then you're going to sell more people a week just off this average. And instead of 800, we close at a thousand. So now you wrote 5,000 ALP. You doubled without having to double. Isn't that cool? Like the other person, the other person, they're like, oh, I'm doing 2,400 ALP. I had to see 10 people. Well, in order to write 5,000, I'm probably going to have to what? See 20 people. That makes sense. Like normally somebody might think that that's not always the case. If you can, oh, I don't know if you can see those numbers up there. Let me pull back for a second. There we go. I kind of put, put them up top there. 
but yeah, you'll if you instead of seeing ten, you saw twelve. That's that's not that much of a difference. It's only a twenty percent increase. We didn't double right there. From from now, closing ratio went from one out of three of thirty percent to forty percent. So instead of closing at thirty percent, we're closing at forty percent, and instead of closing at eight hundred, we're closing at a thousand. Right, a couple of marginal increases at the end of the week doubles the overall. So I would always sit there and play around with these numbers. I'd be like, oh well, what if I gave fifteen presentations a week? Well, what if I worked on closing this week and uh, you know what? I've, I've been closing at forty, but I saw some of these other people were closing like seventy percent. I'm gonna call them. So I would call the people that were closing at the higher rates and I would pick their brain and I would role play. And I'm like, I'm going to really focus on the closing. Like players, sometimes they'll focus on certain things and get them fixed. You know, like I'm going to really focus on my left hand today, you know, this week, this month until I get it done. Right. So for me in the business, I really needed to focus on my closing. Boom. I end up getting my closing up a lot more. So uh, you focus on that, you get your closing up, your ALP per sale. Who has the highest ALP per sale? Call them up, ask them what they're doing, and then do it. I would call Gio in that situation. He's been historically the highest ALP per sale that, that we've had and, and high quality as well. I have some people that write big deals, but they don't have good quality. So you don't wanna oversell people either. You know, If somebody never had life insurance before, and now all of a sudden you got them paying $300 a month, and they only make like $3,000 a month. Let's be smart here, right? You got to be financial advisors for the people as well. Um, there we go. So, so you know, but, um, uh, but so, so you can increase these numbers. That makes sense? So now here's what we're going to do. For today's sake, instead of 2,400, we're going to use this as our example moving forward, 2,000. So set... C10 people, <clears throat> three of them enroll, 800 a piece, 2,400. Let's even call it 2,000 and call it a day. It'll be easier for us for numbers sake as well. All right, so how do we get compensated? Well, we get paid two ways. The first way we get paid is, is our commission. And when we get our commission, it's at our, uh, uh, our, our rate. So an agent, Starts out, we'll just write this right now. An agent is at 60%, a supervisor is at 62.5, a GA, which is our manager, is at 67.5, an MGA is at 75, and an RGA is at 80%. So we could go through those again so you could write those down. Just put a little key somewhere on your notes there. An agent is at 60%, SA 62.5, GA 67.5, MGA 75, RGA 80. So um, now agent starts out at a 60% commission. That's your percentage. Now I will tell you for your first 90 days, you start out at 50%, but you get a higher advance, 75% advance. Okay. Then after your first like 90 days or so, 45 days, I think it's like 45 days after that period, then it switches to a 60% normal wage and contract. Okay. So uh, your commission is going to be what? 60%, right? So of, of your what? 60% times your ALP. So all you do every week is you just take your ALP that you did times it by your commission level. So when you get promoted to a supervisor, you're going to times it by 62 and a half. When you get promoted to an MGA, you're at 75%. So when you write personal business, you're going to get paid 75% commission on that, right? So that's a 25% increase in pay. Most people get a 2% pay raise a year. So that would take them 10 years to get, you know? So um, 60 to 75 is a 25% increase, right? So here we go. What's the answer to this question? 60% of two grand is your $1,200. And that $1,200 equals what? Your commission. That's how much money you made for that sale commission. That's for 2000 ALP, right? Now, when they pay us our commission, guys, 
they pay us 65% advance on commission. So that means that if this week I turned in $2,000, we turn in our business. Here's our business cycle, guys. We turn in on Monday by 9 a.m. has to be uploaded. And, and then as long as it's uploaded by 9, you can get paid on that uh, on Friday, same week. Crazy. Before, you used to have to, wait, have to wait till the fall on Monday. Speeding things up a little bit. But so uh, you upload Monday by 9 and you get paid that, that week on it. They're gonna give you an advance on your commission. So you made $1,200, but this week they advance us now 65%, which equals $780. So upfront in your pay this week, this is what gets deposited into your account. This is your what? Advance on? Commission, advance on commission. Now, that leaves the difference of what do they stay, that would they still owe us? $420 is still owed to us. So this week you turn in the business, you make 1200, they pay us 780. They put the 420 where? In the back end. They will now pay that to us over the remaining 11 months of the year. You get that paid out. They break it down evenly? Or no, no. In fact, they basically give you like nothing in the first few months, and they you get most of this in month 10, 11, and 12 is where you'll get most of this. Yeah, well, here's what happens now. You have three, two, two different... My, my dad used to do insurance when I was younger, and he worked for a company that when they earned their commission, they paid them the whole commission up front. So if you earned a $1,200 commission this week, you would get all 1,200, boom, right in your bank account, right? But he said, but Tommy, if something happened where the policy got canceled or it didn't get approved or they got declined or whatever, and they cancel within that first year, I gotta pay the money back to the company and I got hit with these chargebacks. And he said, you know what they did is they just took it out of my commission. So I was supposed to get paychecks. I never got the paychecks because they tell me I'd owe the money back to them, right? He said, so then there's other companies that are the opposite. They'll go like this. You make a $1,200 commission this week. They don't pay it to you until the policy holder pays one full year. Once the policy pays a year, then you get your full your commission. My dad was like, that was kind of tough because you can't wait a year to get paid. Also, the other option he told me was he would be in the home and he would be trying to convince the person to just pay the full year up front. Right? So you can get paid, like yeah, because he wanted to get paid. <laughs> That's kind of tough because, I mean, try and get $80 a month. That's tough. Try and get a thousand dollars all at one time. You know, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah, you know, I'd rather just try and get 20 bucks a week. 20 bucks a week is a lot easier, right? 20 bucks a week, right? Set 20 bucks a week aside to protect your family. Set aside when you need to at least can you get a really a cup of coffee? How much, you can't go to Starbucks for 20 bucks a week. I don't think you can at least, you know. Try it out. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> you know, call it Pizza Hut. See if you can go there for 20 bucks. You ever go to Dick's? You got kids? Oh, wait till you have kids. I think they changed the rules. I think it's like cost you $50 just to get in the dicks and then they don't let you out until you pay another $50. I'll keep you in there. A hundred bucks every time I go to dicks. I can't, I don't know what's going on with that place, right? So you make these jokes with the people and you make like 80 bucks ain't nothing. 80 bucks ain't nothing. And you're like, yeah, right. I spent 80 bucks on this, 80 bucks on that. Don't even let me catch them smoking, you know? Yeah, uh, we could just crush it, crush it, you know? So anyways, there's so many opportunities for them to set aside money. But the point is, guys, the point is, is you know, some companies will pay it all up front and then you get hit crushed or they'll pay you none up front. You got to wait. This is like a hybrid, which is awesome because now we're getting 65% up front, but God forbid the policy doesn't get approved, pushed through or whatever happens with it. Now you don't owe the money back. What's going to happen is guess what? They're just not going to give you that. 
right? But as long as the policy is on the books, guess what you're going to get in month nine, 10, 11, 12, like a baby after like nine months, kind of, you start seeing some nice results here. Now, that's paying you 10, 11, 12. What are they paying you here, guys? They're paying you the rest of your commission. So the full year commission gets paid after 12 months. Now no more commissions are owed. What do we get after 12 months? 13 months. Now we get what's called renewal commission. Renewal commission. So for an agent, the renewal commissions go like this. For an agent, it's 3%. For an SA, it's 4%. For a GA, it's 5%. For an MGA, it's 7%. For an RGA, it's 8%. Three, four, five, seven, eight. So here, here's what's cool about this. 3% of everything that you bring into the company, you will be paid on for the rest of your life as an agent. The average person here um, earns over 5% renewal. Average person in the company, over 5%. So if you, if you just put average, the average person with this company takes home 5% of everything they bring into the company for the rest of their life. Everything you bring in, you're getting paid 5% for the rest of your life. That don't happen to Mary Kay. Those, those, those ladies are bringing a lot in, a lot of business into Mary Kay too, a lot of business, right? They don't get paid for the rest of their lives. They get paid for selling the eyelash extensions one time. The next time they buy the mascara, they get paid again. And again and again, but they have to go back and buy it. They actually have to go back to so physically log on and buy the stuff, right? So the difference between residual income, right, and passive income, people sometimes mistake passive income as residual income, two separate things. Passive income is where I open up a t-shirt store online, right, and somebody last night buys a t-shirt off me while I was sleeping. That's passive income. It only happens once though, yes. So this would go back to your 3% to say as an agent. So if I sell a, a sell for $1,200, I get the 780 up front, the 420 on 10, 11, 12. Yes. On the 13th month, my cut is only going to be $36, though, right? A 3% or whatever I write. Yes. Yeah. So you're, you're, what you're going to make here is 3%. Whatever I write that whole month for my first month. Correct. But it'd be per year. Per year, right? Yeah. So, what's three percent of of, of uh, two thousand? That's what you're gonna make. Sixty bucks. 60 bucks. Okay. So, basically, for the rest of your life, you're gonna make sixty dollars a year. Sixty dollars a year. Okay. So, let's say now it's a great point. So, so far, total income earned after the first year is twelve hundred dollars, right? Okay. Now, every year for the next, let's say. How many years is this policy going to stay on the books for? Let's just say 20. Let's just use a low number. They're, they're longer than that. Average policies are longer than that. Okay. Once policies hit 13 months, they stay on forever. People don't cancel after that. It makes no sense for them to cancel, you know? So they, they so um, the rate of, of policies that stay on the books after 13 months is really high. So now you got to think. How much is a 2000 ALP, 3%, how much are we making off of that? $60 per year. Does that make sense how we figured that out, guys? You're at a 3% renewal rate and you just wrote 2000. So for working one week of your life, you just generated $60 a year for the rest of your life, okay? How much is that? $60 a year times 20 years is $1,200. And we already got paid what? $1,200, right? So we generated $2,400 in income for our families for one week 20, for, for doing 2,000 average. Christina did $16,000 in a week. She generated for her family, she generated $20,000 in one week as an agent real money it's not this is real money they put in your bank account you buy groceries with it go on vacation like whatever you want it's crazy so so does this make sense so far guys now um so we got 1200 in renewal money 
1200 in commission money. That's the first way we get paid. The second way we get paid is W G B. Anybody know what that stands for? World's greatest bonus. This, they, they call it that for a reason too, because this is your bonus. So WGB is your bonus. So we get paid, the second way we get paid is what? Bonus. First way commission, second way bonus. But it ain't just no normal bonus, right? It's the world's greatest bonus, which means that there's no greater bonus on the whole entire planet than we get here. <laughs> so in the insurance industry, this don't happen. They don't have this type of stuff. This bonus is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Wait till you see the income it generates for us. So um, the way that this is going to work now is on a monthly basis, your bonus is calculated by what we do monthly, but it gets paid out weekly. Okay. So I should have had a slide, but I'm not that tech savvy. So I'm better with this thing. So cheat sheet would go like this. If for the month you did 4,000 ALP, okay? If this is for the month, I'm gonna put here ALP over here, and then we're gonna put the bonus under over here. And we're gonna make like a little cheat sheet box right here for us. So if for the month I did 4,000 for a month of ALP, guys, that is only 1,000 per week, okay? But if that happened, my bonus for the month would be $320, right? Which is basically how much a week? $80 a week. I'm sorry, I missed Yep. Yes, sir. So let's say the month of May, I did 4,000 for the month. Guess what my bonus would, would be for the month? 320. So that's like I, as simple as I could possibly just keep it, you know, just like whatever I did for the month, this is what your bonus would be. So that's what it would be. Well, if my bonus was 320 a month, that means I probably make like 80 bucks a week in bonus on average, right? But it never works, it never works out like that because it creeps up a little bit. 6K, my bonus would be 610, which now it's like $150 a week in bonus money. Did you get paid this? RGA? This is an agent. This is an agent. If you write business, you get paid two ways as an agent. The first way we get paid is in commission. We just went over all that, right? The second way we get paid every single week is, is, is off of our bonus. The way that I'm going to explain to us our weekly bonus is I'm going to show us how to figure out the monthly bonus. And then that tells us the weekly bonus. Like if my bonus for the month was 600, then what's my weekly bonus? About a buck 50, just divided by four, right? So now for the month, if I do 8K for a month, my bonus is going to be 940, which is $235 a week. If I do 10K for a month, the bonus is 1300 and I don't even know what that is per week. What is that? $325 per week. If I do 12K, the bonus is 1660, and that's $415 per week in bonus money. Now, anything over 12,000 for the month, anytime, if you're at 12,000, what's your bonus for the month? For 415 per week. 1660 for the month, right? Now, once you're at 12,000 for the month, you know that you already made 1660 in bonus money, okay? Well, every time that you go up another $1,000 in ALP for the month, your bonus goes up $200. So it's easy to figure out from that point. So if, I, if let's say you did 13,000, then you would just add 200 to that. If you did 14,000, add 400 to that. Add 15,000, add 600 to that. It just keeps going up 200 for every thousand that you do over 1,200. Now, every month, yep, so it starts over, boom. June, brand new, you're back to zero. So in June, 
10, I would be getting paid from May right now. Because that's how we work them. So all those sales were in May. No, you got paid every week. Every yeah, week. every week. So, so first week of May, like for instance, today is Monday. You got paid for last week and today. No, we got paid Friday. So watch. June started on, on Monday. Today is June 7th, okay? So today is the end of week one for June, right? So today, everybody worked last week. They upload their business by 9 a.m. today, right? And now we're, we all get paid on Friday this week. And now we're working this week. We're gonna upload next Monday, the 14th by 9 a.m. And then we're gonna get paid Friday, same week, right? So that goes to the next week, exactly. If you got stuff that doesn't get uploaded by 9 a.m. on Monday, it gets it just gets pushed back till the next week. So you won't get paid this Friday, you'll get paid the following Friday. So that's the only thing. You'll make sure you upload your business. So basically, like every every joint is talking this week. Uh, basically, we have um, so, so next Monday by 9 a.m. we we put that everything uploaded, and then Friday we'll get paid for whatever tokens we did this week. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good questions. Right. Do the bonuses come in a separate check? Deposit. Yes. Yep. You'll get two deposits. Good question. You'll get two deposits. One will be a bonus. One will be an advance. So it'll be easy for you to target and make sure like, cause if you do your calculations and you figure out like, okay, my bone, my bonus should be 300. And then they only deposit like 150, but how come I got half and you email and find out like they messed up or, you know, we fixed it or something, but you can know and tell because there's two deposits. Now, when you get in leadership, there's more deposits, right? We only get paid two ways when we're, when we're an agent. Watch how many ways we get paid when we're in leadership. Get a lot more deposits. So, um, but let's stay over here for one second. Back to this bonus now. Let's use an example. This month, we do 8,000 ALP for the month, right? How much is that per week in ALP that I had to do? If I do 2K per week, that's basically what we just did, right? So if I do 2,000 per week, what did I do per month? 8,000 per month. If I do 8,000 for a month, what's my bonus that month? 940. 940, if I got a monthly bonus of 940, what did my weekly bonus average out to be? About 235. So if I average at 235, boom, right here. So this week, I did two two thousand ALP. What is my bonus? You don't get one. Two thirty five. Two thirty five. You said two two thousand. Yeah, but this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This week I did two thousand, and and for the month I did eight thousand. If I'm doing two thousand a week, I'm doing eight thousand a month. If I'm doing eight thousand a month. My bonus is nine forty a month. If my bonus is nine forty a month. My bon my bonus is two thirty five a week. See how we kind of work that back? It's like a circle, right? So we can go forward, backwards, however you want to get around to it. But we can get right back to it, and we're going to keep ending up at two thirty five. <laughs> so if you do two thirty two thousand ALP a week, your bonus should be two thirty five a week, right? So now the bonus is 235. Make sense? Okay. The bonus is 235. The uh, advance was 780. <clears throat> Total upfront paycheck is 1015 income, cash, money deposited into your bank account for the week, right here. And that's off of 2000 ALP. Percentage-wise, half. That's why I always say, whatever you do for the week in ALP, 2,000, you'll get paid half of that, 1,000. So up front, we upload 2,000, 9 a.m. on Monday. Friday, you get a deposit of $1,000, right? But it doesn't end there because this 780 is what? Your upfront commission. They still owe us what? $420 plus they still owe us all the, all the renewals you'll be getting, which we figured will be at least $1,200 over those years. So when you add all this up, 
There's 1,200 plus 1,200 is a total of 2,400 plus the bonus of 235. That's 2,750 or what? What the heck is it? 2735, 2735 in total income. So off of 2000 ALP, you'll make an income of $2,735. And that comes out to be, I believe, about 136%. So I just want to educate you guys. I know this is crazy. I want to educate you on the numbers behind this and so you see where all this is coming from because you can you control this like you really can get in there and if you know you can kind of control it a little bit and figure out things like oh wow if i do a little bit more of this they put a little bit more sauce in in my bank account so i might try, maybe i'll do a little bit more of this so you'll start to figure stuff out now um that's that's as an agent don't be confused i just want to educate you guys okay don't be confused there's companies out there that'll dangle anything they want in front of you. Um, in our agency, we don't go after agents from other companies. I'll repeat that. In our agency, we don't go after agents from other companies. So nobody here has ever been directed or ever will be directed to go on to social media and start trying to find all the people that work for other companies and try and DM them and get them to come aboard and try and dangle fancy options and stuff out there for it. We don't do that. Has any of you been approached like that? Anybody on this call? No, nobody on this call has ever been approached like that. Nobody from our company. We don't go after licensed agents. We don't need them. I don't want their bad habits. You know what I mean? If they find us and seek us out, you know, more power to them. Okay. But you're going to get messages from your, as soon as you get your license, they put your license in a national directory. So everybody got your information, just so you know, you're going to get emails and text messages and LinkedIn's and all kinds of stuff and DMS. Okay. Especially when you start doing good in the business, cause we project it. Like if you had a big month, as long as you're cool with it, we're going to put you on social media and give you a shout out. So you can share it with your friends and family, you know, as a little acknowledgement, we like to recognize people for doing well. If you follow us on Instagram and stuff, it's like the number one thing we like to do is just recognize people. I probably should do more than that on there. I just, I'm behind the times a little bit. Maybe you could hit people can help me out a little bit with the social media. I could all use all the help we can get, but um, you're going to get attacked and you can trade. People are going to try and get in there and talk to you all kind of stuff about nonsense and telling you, they're going to tell you like, Oh, I can give you hundred percent contracts and I can make you a president. And I, you make me a president. That's interesting. I had my life insurance license for three months. Sounds interesting. Oh, wow. You want me to run an office for you? Really? I just got licensed three months ago. Think about that. You know? So, um, just so you know, they're going to tell you 100% contracts, 120% contracts, right? There's no renewals, okay? And then you got to pay for the lead cost. There's no opportunity for leadership with these opportunities. Like, okay, so if you come in and they give you 120% contract and you want to bring somebody else in, what contract are you going to give them? They're going to give them 120% contract too. And where are you going to be? Same level. You don't get no money off of them. There's no renewals. There's no, there's no team building. There's no stewardship. There's no leadership. There's no mentorship. There's no coaching. There's no team. There's no family environment. There's no Torchmark corporate or, or, or globe, globe, globe life. There's no AIL. There's no championship after championship after championship. I'm telling you, there's no million dollars, millionaires being made or they can't come up with a, uh, I could pull up a Rolex right now of 30 millionaires from this company right now that I can call them and get them on this call and I'll talk to you. Straight up. I don't know. I haven't developed 30 people like that, but I got a good handful of about 10. At least, I developed at least 10 people that are straight up millionaires. Well, I had to get there first. You know what I mean? But so, so that's the cool thing. Like I know how to do it. You know, if I know how to do it, it's, it ain't going to be easy. Not everybody can do it, but if you, I think if you put your mind to it, you're ready and, and you follow the system, this is not discriminatory. There's no discrimination of AIL, man. I'll tell you that much for sure. No matter what, 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 what language you come from, what, what background we have, people who come from all different types of backgrounds, work at, like where you worked at before, like what you've done before, where you lived before, the language that you speak. Some people who have like the broken English and hard accents, you would think that they would be tough. They actually do really well here. They use it to your advantage. Some people use it. Oh, I got an, an accent. I couldn't do it. The other guy's like, I got an accent. And, and, and what happened is I, I had to like 
talk slower and people had to really listen to what I had to say. And, and I used it to my advantage. And then number one producers from in our old agency is from Egypt. Broken English. I couldn't even, I had to talk to him on the phone. It was like really hard for me to figure out what he's trying to ask me. Like, you should have just, you want more leads. Okay, cool. We'll get your number one producer. How many leads you want, man? You know? So like, so anyways, um, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of all this. So back over here, um, back over here. So that makes sense on, on the, on the, on the contracts. If anybody ever says anything to you, say, Oh, you got 120. I got at least 136 just to get started. And what's your residual income? You know, who's your leader? What are they doing? Yeah. And we, I mean, maybe you could help them out a little bit. They're on the wrong path. I mean, they shouldn't be trying to leech off other companies anyways. That's the first thing. Like, think about that. Like, what if you're married and somebody hits on you and then you say, uh, no, I'm married. And then they still keep trying to hit on you. Is that a good person of moral and character and ethics and integrity? Is it? No, no. Right. So that's why I, say, I tell these companies, like literally they hit me up all the time, like stop messaging me, <laughs> you know, and they keep trying to message me from different things. So they're going to hit you at one social media, then another social media, then another social media, and they're going to try and circle around and get you somehow to, to listen to their baloney. But the grass ain't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it, you know? So I just want to educate you on the contrast because then you could show them really who, who got the best contract. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, now we get into management and leadership. So we become a supervisor. In order to become a supervisor, we have to do 90 uh, days. 24K over 90 days, 24K over 90 days, like we talked about before, okay? Well, if you're doing 2,000 a week, that's essentially 8,000 a month. And if you do 8,000 a month, that's 24 over 90 days. So there we go. So you're pretty much right on pace hitting those numbers. Okay, now when you're a supervisor, we get paid four ways, four ways. The first way we get paid is in our commission. Second way we get paid is in our bonus off of our personal business, just like an agent. If I'm a supervisor, I'm going to go still see my clients. If I go see my clients and I make some sales and I in, uh, um, upload ALP for the week and I upload $2,000 for myself and I'm a supervisor, well, I'm going to get paid bonus and commission off of that. Now, the only thing is, is the SA is at a 62.5%, 62.5% versus the agent. When I, when I was an agent, I was getting paid 60. Now I'm getting paid 62.5. So that's the only difference on my personal production is we make a little bit more money in the upfront commission because it's 62, but we also get a... 4% renewal now on all of my personal business as well. You went from 3% to 4%. What kind of increase is that? That's a 33% pay raise. How long does it take you to get a 33% pay raise? If you go from a 60 to a 62 and a half, that's a four over 4% pay raise. If you go from a 60 to a 62.5%, that's a 4% pay raise up front. So this is a 4% increase when you get your, your promotion, your first promotion, you get a 4% pay raise, which my dad had to work three years to get a 4% pay raise. You work three months. I got people who've worked here for three months, got a 4% pay raise. And then their renewals went up from three to four, which is a 33% increase in the retirement. How about that? That's first thing. Everybody good on this? Understand how this does off your personal business, you write still on your own. When you're a manager, we call that leading from the front. Leading from the front, okay? Now, now also, when you're in leadership, we get paid a third way, right? And this is going to be your, we'll call it override commission. Or you could call it your leadership commission. 
And what that is, is that's the split between you and your agent. So the supervisor is at 62.5, the agent is at 60. So when they wrote the business from 0% all, all the way to 60%, who got paid on that? The agent did, right? But from 60 to 62 and a half, this little split here, who gets that? The supervisor. Does that make sense, guys? So the supervisor caps that split there, which is a difference of 2.5%, 60 to 62 and a half, right? Okay, so now what did your agent do? Your agent did whatever you trained them to do. So what did you train them to do? Let's say we trained them to be average. And how many agents do we have on our team? We'll use three, okay? So if we have three agents and each one did 2,000 ALP for a week, my team would do 6,000 ALP for a week. That's team production. Does that make sense? 6,000 ALP. What do I earn off of that in my override commission? 2.5%. So with that, what's that equal? $130. So we're going to take 6,000 times it by 2.5%, right? So that's $150. So for the week, my commission is $150, right? That's the first way we get paid. Commission equals $150. Now, when we get our commission, do we get it all up front? No, no we get 65% advance. So 65% advance on this is what I get paid up front. So up front would be like $95, we'll call it. So I'm going to get 95 up front and I'm going to have 55 that's going to get paid out to me when? Yeah, over the rest of the year. Then in the second year now, I get the asset, the agent, sorry, the agent is at a 3% renewal, right? I'm at a 4% renewal. So what type of renewal am I making for the week? 1%. So anything that my agent does, I get 1% renewal on that business, right? Get 1% renewal. Now, some people think that like, well, if you fire your agent, do you get theirs? No, you don't. So you get 1%. That's it. If the agent leaves or whatever happens, that just goes away. Nobody gets it. So there's no advantage to doing that. But does that make sense, guys? So if your agent's at three and you're at four, when you write personal business, you're going to get what? 4% renewal, right? But when you are, in, uh, when your agent writes personal business, you're going to get what? 1% renewal. So what's 1% of six grand? 60, 60 bucks, $60, right? So now for the next 20 years, you're going to get $600 for 10 years, 600 for another 10 years. You just generated yourself $1,200 in renewal money plus another 150 in total commissions, right? So there's 1350 over there in total income. Up front, what did you make for the week up front in commission? 95 right? 95. So don't get all upset. You made 95 bucks because your team did six grand. No, you really just generated $1,350 for your, for your, yourself and your family. Okay. Um, now let's go over here and let's talk about the fourth way we get paid. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm, I'm a little confused. So uh, it seems like the split concept applies for renewal rate and it also applies for the difference in commissions and is it based on 
No, well, yeah, the the the, a, the agents are going to add up, and whatever the agents add up to, it's what it is. Each of, this this agent might get fifteen. This one might do two thousand. This one might do four thousand. So you you make it respectively. Yes. So as a supervising agent, okay, we're going in the way four, but let's let's go back over our ways now. So I'm a supervisor. The first thing I can control is what myself. So I can always, anytime I want set some appointments, go see some clients. I'm probably pretty good now. So I can go out there, uh, make some sales. And let's say I just have an average week for myself, right? Well, I know I'm gonna write 2000, right? Well, we know that as an agent, 2000, I would probably be
and then you have another GA, and then they got the same thing. Does this look familiar? This is what we just went over, right? We were just talking about this person right here. Look at this team. This team was doing what? 15,000 a week, what we just went over, right? Well, now let's say that this GA takes the two essays and makes them GAs, right? If you're a GA and you make these two essays to two GAs, then what are you gonna be? You'd be the MGA. So that's what we're looking at right there, right? This is what just happened. You just did this. You made this, you made this happen right here. You're the MGA, you took your essays, made them GAs, and then your essay, your GAs made two essays. So you did all this work, put this together, developed all these people, you wrote it down, game planned it out, built yourself up, developed yourself so you could develop others. You've done all this and you finally hit your MGA promotion. I don't know, is it worth it? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's see if this is all worth it. So we're looking at a team of over here of eight people doing about 15K, a team of eight people doing about 15K. So we got a team of about, let's just say 15 people doing $30,000 a week in production. That's your MGA team, okay? That's your team right now. What's this look like? Vince and them, I mean, they're doing 50,000 a week, these guys. Vince, Geo, he's got to do 50,000 a week, you know? So, but let's just use 30,000. Everybody is making sense so far. And I kind of just scribbled this up on the board real quick. But I feel like we're, I think we're starting to get it now. So I can move a little bit faster. Okay. All right. So here we go. Um, I'm an MGA. You're an MGA. We're MGAs. Okay. And we have two GAs. Each GA has two essays. Each essay has a couple agents. Everybody's coaching everybody up, hitting their goals, executing. We got to hit. We got a total of about 15 people on the team. Each person's doing about 2,000 a week on average, hitting about 30,000 a week as a team. So whether this takes you nine months or a year in mind, nine months or 29 months, you know, however long it takes you to get here, it's going to be worth it. So, um, how do we get paid? Well, the first way we get paid obviously is what? Personal bonus, personal commission. When I'm an MGA, I can still go out there and write business anytime I want. The only difference here is now I'm a black belt. Now I'm like a ninja. I can go out there and talk about those numbers. When we remember how we took, like you said, you know, if you closed at a higher ratio and, and, you, and you had more ALP per sale, like that's Geo. Geo can set four appointments, see three of them, close two of them, and, and write more business than half the agency. And he could do that on Tuesday from like three to six. It'd be done with his whole week. And everybody will work all week long and still won't even hit the number he hits. That's because he put in all that work over the years to master his craft to get to that point. And you're going to get there too, but you got to give your chance to get there. You can't quit within your first hundred presentations. Anybody, if you don't plan on giving a hundred presentations, don't continue. You're going to waste your time. You better commit to doing 100 presentations now. All right. Tell my son. I'm told my told you guys, like I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy my son a helmet and pay an extra money just so he can wear it around the house for the first two months because I ain't dealing with him quitting or crying or nothing. You know, and if he does, he's still gonna he has to muster it out. So, anyways, but boom, boom, boom. Now um number three, how do we get paid? Leadership commission. Check this out though, on your personal business up here, when you're an MGA and you write business, first of all, you're getting 75% and 7% uh, renewal on that business. So when an MGA writes business, they, instead of getting like 136%, they get 236% or 226%. MGA gets like 226% if you figure this out. But the 75% with 7% renewal, it's crazy. The, the agent's getting a 3% renewal. The MGA is getting a 7% renewal. That's more than double. More than double. So commission now is going to equal what? Well, the MGA is at what percentage? 75. And the GA is at what? 67.5. So what's the difference? 7.5. That is the leadership commission, 7.5% for the MGA. And they times that by what? The team ALP. So what's the team ALP? 30,000. 30, 
So seven and a half times 30,000 is 1,500. Is that right? No, I'm sorry. You know what it is? It's 2250. That's right. So we got 2250 and that equals the, the what? That equals the commission. So leadership commission for the week is 2250. But remember, we don't get paid our commission for the week. We get an advance on commission of 65%. So that would really be 1462 is the upfront paid money. But we know there's still going to be another $750 coming to us in the back and in the rest of the year. And then we get, MGAs now get 2% override renewal because remember, they're at a seven and the GA is at what? A five, the SA is at what? Four agents at what? Three on the renewals. Agent gets a three renewal, SA is a four renewal, GA is a five renewal, MJ is a seven renewal. So what's the difference on that? Five to seven is what? Two. So the renewals on the MGA get 2% renewal per week off of 30 grand is way better than 1% off of 15 grand, right? Or 1% off of eight grand or 3% off of two grand. Cause that's the, the agent gets 3% on their two grand a day, right? Right. The, the, the essay gets 1% off their team of three, which is six grand per week, 1% of six grand. They get 1% of maybe, uh, you know, 15 grand, this 2% of 30 grand, 2% of 30 grand is what? 600 bucks, 600 bucks a year, right? So for this one single week for coaching their team up, they just generated $600 a year for the rest of their life. Talk about having your cable bill paid for. Every week, pick another bill you wanna knock out. All right, mom, I'll, mom, I'll, I'll do your, your and grandma's cell phone bill. Next week, I'll have their cell phone bill paid for the rest of your life. What do you mean? One week, seven days, no more cell phone bill, rest of your life. Capiche? What do you mean? There's this thing called renewals. It's this thing in our industry. Nobody gets this but us. We're in, we're in life insurance. Mom, remember when I did life insurance? You told me not to do it. You told me to quit. Remember, mom? Now I pay for your cell phone bill with the renewals in one week. Remember, mom? You told me to quit. That's how you're. That's why. That's why you're driving the Lexus. You know, like. That's what I'm talking about. You, anybody see what's going on here? You may wonder, where's, the, where's the real wealth at? Where's the, where's the guy who's 40 years old and he gets to drive around in sweatpants on Tuesday in the afternoon? Like, what do you do for a living? That would be me. I'll be driving around on Tuesday, busting my ass. And I would see like, what does this guy do? He's driving like a BMW. He has a backwards hat on. Like, what's he do? Right? He's a business owner. You know, probably has renewals. So the thing here, check this out now. This is cool because um, the renewals on this is $600 a year, right? Times 10 years is six grand, times 20 years is $12,000. You just generated 12,000. Like where can you work for one week and generate $12,000 in income? That's $12,000 in renewal money that gets paid. Plus, what do we got here? Uh, uh, $2,250 of commission money that gets paid. $2,250 commission money. And then we have, on top of that, bonus. So four is leadership bonus. Leadership bonus. Well, the MGA gets about 90% of whatever the team's bonus is. About 90%. Well, what kind of bonus did our team get this week, guys? Anybody want to walk us through that? What kind of bonus did the team get? How would you walk yourself through that? Anybody on the Zoom? Who wants to walk us through how we're going to figure out what our team bonus was for the week?
play some Loco Contigo. You got it. Okay. So we got it right here. We have an, he said, if you have 15 agents and each agent does 2000, that means your team did 30,000. So you'll have 15 agents all bonusing at 235. So everybody got that? Now, what's 15 times 235? Three thousand five hundred and seventy-five. Three thousand five hundred and seventy-five dollars. And three hundred that equals what? Total team bonus. So your team total bonus, everybody on your team, they got paid a total of thirty-seven fifty or thirty, thirty-five seventy-five. We get out of whatever our team gets, what do we get? We get ninety percent of that, which is Okay, which is $3,200. So the MGA bonus is $3,200 for the week. The MGA pay is $1,400 for the week. Total income, $4,600 for the week without going to see any clients yet. Right, so that's about fifteen percent or so of total production. But now, if the if the MGA goes and sees their clients, then they're going to obviously make at least another thousand dollars. So now you could turn it into fifty-six hundred dollars. You see why people get fired up? There's a lot, a lot. There's a lot on the line. But energy goes. You know, like you got to have, got to have the energy to make this kind of money. This ain't you. It's low energy type of money. This is high energy money. You got to have the higher energy. You got to bring it. It's not good. You're going to be expending energy to get this type of stuff. But, but man, I'll tell you what, um, 5,600 for the week, 4,600 for the week off of the team. If you write personal business, 5,600 for the week, but not including the $12,000 in residual money, not including the, um, the other $750 in back end money that you just got built for the year not included on your personal business, uh, all the renewal money that you build off of that. If you wrote, if you get 7% renewal on 2000, that's $140 a year, which is another $2,800 in renewal money over the next 20 years. So really, you really built about $15,000 in renewal money that, that, that week. And then you put yourself uh, upfront commissions in advance of really like 2250 for the week and upfront commissions in advances, bonus money, of 235 plus, plus 3,200 or 3,500 in upfront money. So um, any questions on this? <laughs> I don't know, we could, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, I guess. There's a lot of different ways to break these numbers down. So this is the trying to keep it simple, but you know, make sure you guys got the details of it as well. So the point is, I got to get my 15 people to do 2000 a week. I got to get my team up to 30 grand or I can get 10 people to do three grand a week or I can get 30 people to do one grand a week. Don't matter. But if I get my people to do $30,000 a week, I'll be making a good $4,500 a week and then come easy. So that was the first challenge I had to get to. So it took me, like I said, about eight months to get promoted to that MGA position and, uh, and in my first year, I was able to, you know, clear over 200 as an MGA, figuring this stuff out. Um, but once you get to the MGA, then you get to teach people how to do it. So I got to an MGA and I was, I was like, this is great. I just made like five grand last week. And I didn't have to really even make any phone calls. You know, I couldn't believe it. So uh, I was like, I got to teach other people how to, I got to get other people. It's like, if you get to the top of the mountain and, and you look around and you're the only one there, you haven't brought enough people with you, right? If you get to the top and they say it's only lonely at the top if you didn't bring enough people with you. And I figured like it was cool on Friday night when I didn't have to be at work in the office, setting appointments, seeing any clients. Cause I saw clients every night, every night for like six years straight straight out of college, straight up. From 21 to 28, I was grinding, grinding. 
I gave it up, chalked it up. So you can have these next six years. I gave it to the game, did, did, did sacrificed everything, like everything you could possibly think of you could sacrifice in your 20s, which isn't even that much anyways. I was number one Steelers fan. I didn't go to no Steeler games. I couldn't even tell you who was starting. I got tickets, gave them away, you know, like stuff like that. And I look back at it like, oh, poor you. You know, you didn't go to the Steelers game. You know, like I look back at like at the time I thought it was, I thought I was like, I really did. I was like, boy, you're, you're really sacrificing a lot, man. You know, but I was just looking back at it. Silly. It was a Steeler game. I, I was sacrificing like Friday nights when everybody was texting me to go to like tequila willies or, you know, these crazy bars that they had downtown. Right. Like, so um, I gave that up guys. And uh, from 22 to, you know, pretty much 28. My first three years at Ameriprise Financial as a financial advisor. I worked 80 hours a week as a financial advisor, nonstop, nonstop. And I still barely even learned anything because it was just a lot. So I left there and I came here and I did the same thing here. I just worked like 80 hours a week and poured everything I had into the business, everything, everything I had into, the, into my business. Because I could have took my time, my energy, my effort and my money, and I could have invested it into other things like the stock market. I was already in the stock market. I did it for three years. And you know, what I learned about being in the stock market, get your ass out of the stock market. So I got out of the stock market, took all my money out of the stock market and invested it into me. I'm not invested into Pepsi. I don't even know what the CEO of Pepsi does when he goes home. He could kick his dog for all I know. You know, he probably drinks Coke, <laughs> right? That's, you know, so, so I don't know what it, I don't know what's going on up there, right? I know what's going on over here. So I put it all into this. I took my money out of everything. I put every nickel, every, every thought, think people are like, hmm, what kind of stock should I invest into? Let me go waste three hours investing into this, listening to people who don't know what the hell they're talking about anyways. Nobody knows. If for someone to say they know what they're talking about with the stock market, that is a true claim that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. The first, if, they, if, if, if somebody, the first thing anybody should say is, Oh, we're talking about, first of all, let me just clear it. I don't know nothing about the stock market, okay? I'm not going to claim to know anything. I don't know if it's going to go up or if it's going to go down. And, but here's what I think. Okay, maybe I'll listen to you now. But for someone to sit there and claim that they know what's going on in the stock market, I know you're a liar because nobody knows what's going on. So like for someone to even tell me what to even, for me to waste time to think about that, for somebody to tell me that, me to sit there and think about it. And then I have to go on and make these trades, take all my money and put it into this for what? The average rate of return on a stock market is 10%. 10%. Let me just invest it into myself so I could get 1,000%, 10,000% rate of return on it. You're never going to get a better rate of return on anything you invest in but, but yourself. I'm telling you. So time, money, like if, if you got to go get yourself cleaned up, it's worth it. Haircuts, fine. That's a good investment for yourself. It's going to make you money on that screen. They're only looking at your face. I think it might be good invest into a good face. You know what I'm saying? Maybe get a face coach, get some better facial expressions. You know what I'm saying? Get a haircut, you know, like get a good background, get a good screen, get a good computer, get a good audio, get the good microphone, get the good uh, camera, like, you know, all that stuff, investing into your business, into yourself makes a difference. Audio books can't go wrong with it. I don't even bat an eye about buying an audio book. Like if somebody tells me to buy an audio book and they're respectable, I, I, I bought it before they even finished the sentence. Like, you know, I don't even think about that because I know that's easily going to pay for it. Easily going to pay for itself, you know? So um, just think about, you know, just think about that along the way. But I will end on this. I'm going to show you the RGA, okay? I'm going to show you why I worked really, really hard how I was able to earn a million dollars in my fourth year at this company, you know, 937 in my fourth year, fifth year and above been a million dollars since. So since 2008, no, 12, since 2012, sorry. So eight years, 2012, whatever. So here we go. When you're an RGA, okay, you're gonna oversee what? MGAs, right? Let's just use three. We'll use three as an example. Three. That's it. I had 10. I had 10. Let's just use three. So your MGAs are going to do 30,000 each. Just like we just talked about over here. 30,000, right? Your MGAs are going to do a total of 
90,000. Let's just call it 100 for easy numbers. Can we do that? Let's just call it 100. So your total production is going to be 100,000 from your, your MGAs. Okay. You get paid two ways as an RGA. You get, paid, you get paid six ways as an RGA. Six ways as an RGA. Okay. The first way you get paid as an RGA is what? Personal commission. You could write business yourself. You're at an 80% contract. And you're at an 8% renewal. Pretty, pretty good there. So the first way is a renewal, personal commissions. So you get 80 and eight. Second way you get paid is what? Personal bonus. You still can get a bonus as an RGA. Third way we get paid, you're an MGA. So you get an MGA commission. Fourth way is what? What do you think? MGA bonus. And so far, that's everything we just went over, right? That's everything we just went over. So as an MGA, boom, you're getting paid. You're personal if you want to write. Now, we also get paid a fifth way, which is your RGA commission. Number five. How's the RGA commission work? Well, the RGA is at what? 80, the MGA is at what? 75. So what's the difference? 5%. So our commission is going to be 5% times the total team ALP, which is this right here. So what did the team do? I had my MGAs, each MGA did about 33 grand in this situation. So we had a team doing about 100,000 for a week. 5% times 100 grand equals what? 5,000. That's the total commission earned for the week. We get paid an advance of that of, eight, of 65%. So it's about 3,300 in your advance on commission. So as an RGA, RGA commission. Also, they get a 1% renewal on that. So what's 1% of 100,000? $1,000. So you just built in $1,000 a year of renewal money for your family. 1,000 bucks a year. All right. Now on top of that, with number six, you're an RGA, you get paid six ways. You guys can probably guess what this is. RGA bonus. The RGA bonus is 100% of whatever the MGA bonus is. They give them the same thing. So when the MGA does 30 grand, what do they get paid? Here, let's write it over here. Let's add up this money. We could write, write it right over here. We already know what it is. We just figured it out. So when an MGA does 30 grand, what was their um, upfront? Their commission was 2250. Up front, though, they got paid 1462. If you guys could remember that. MGA bonus when their team does 30 grand, the team's bonus was 35.75. When the MGA team did 30 grand, the team's bonus was 35.75. The MGA gets 90% of that, so we ended up being about $3,200, right? So the MGA bonus is about 3,200. Off of 30 grand, right? Let's just call it 3,000 even. So you're an RGA now, and your MGA team, your MGA, this MGA, this is your guy, this is your girl, you trained her up, developed this person. She does 30 grand. She's an MGA, she does 30 grand. What is her bonus gonna be? 3,200, right? 3,200, okay. So now you had how many MGAs? Three, 
each of them all bonus at 3,200. That's $9,600 of total bonus money. What percentage of that do we get as an RGA? 100%, 100%. So, so my RGA bonus for the week is 9,600, okay? My RGA commission for the week is 3.3. 3 3,300. 3,300. Back end money on this. Your back end off the RGA deal was 20K. Back end off the MGA deal we figured was, uh, was it six grand? I think six, no, two, 600. Yeah, six grand. No, 12 grand. I'm sorry. 12 grand off of that. That's the back end money. Um, this commission right here was really five, but they paid you three. So um, this, sorry, you got $32,000 in renewal money. This is back end money for the year of 750 and 1700. So another $2,500 for the end of the year. So back end for the year, 2,500, 32,000 in renewal money. And then upfront money, this is what you get paid this week though. Forget the back, the back end, you made 2,500 bucks for the back end. You made 32,000 in renewal money, but what did we get paid this week? Well, just in renewal and in, in RGA income, RGA income, these two added up, that's 99, that's what? 12,900 in RGA money. And then MGA money was what? 4,600, right? So that's 13,500, what's that? $17,500 for the week in income. And you didn't even go out and write any business yet. So you could still go out, write some business and put some more in there as well. So that's how you make, I mean, right there is, uh, no, it's not, is it? Did you times by 50 or 52? 52. Yeah. So I, I just times it by 50 because everybody takes at least two weeks vacation. So what's it, what's it, what's it equal there without it? Is it nine, eight, 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 75? 875. That's what I thought. Okay. So this would be $875,000 a year built up situation for yourself, right? This took me four years to build, but after four years, I had five MGAs. Those five MGAs were able to generate me plus my MGA team about 900 and 37,000. And that's when this 100% bonus was 20%. That's why I needed to have five of them in order to do what you could do with probably less than not even three. Does that make sense? So anybody ever wonder why you're working hard, okay? They weren't here today. They got no clue what's going on. Okay, don't listen to those armchair quarterbacks. You ever hear of an armchair quarterback? They sit in their, their recliners and they would think they can call the game from there. You know, that would literally, could you imagine, you're in a game. You guys are in a game right now. You're in a game, right? Could you imagine in the middle of a game, the guy hollering, hollering at the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, for, who's your favorite quarterback in, in football? Who's your favorite pitcher in baseball? You know, right? <laughs> So whoever it may be, let's say it's Tom Brady. Tom Brady, everybody knows who that is. What is the Super Bowl? Tom Brady's there, right? And he's in the game and he's in the huddle and he hears like this guy from the sidelines all the way up on, on row J. Hey, Brady, you don't know what you're doing. You got to run the ball to the left. He's like, hold on, guys. He runs over. He's like, what was that, man? He's like, you got to run the ball to the left. He's like, oh. Okay, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. And he runs back and he's like, hey, the guy up in the stands told us we got to be running the bottom left. So here's what we're going to do. 
and he starts listening to people in the stands. Does that make any sense at all? We'll do that in this business. Your mom ain't here. Your grandma ain't here. They don't know what's going on. They weren't in the interview process. They didn't get their license. They didn't do all that. They're going to come in and try and act like they were at practice, at warm-ups, at the team huddle. They scouted the defense with you, and there's a whole team of millionaires behind them. That are, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're not willing to trade places with somebody, don't take advice from them. Okay? Like, if your grandma and grandpa, I love my grandma and grandpa. Love them. But I wouldn't trade places with them. But when he was 60, I don't want to be where he was at when he was 60. I don't want to be. You feel me? If your mom and dad are not like where you would want to be, and they trying to give you advice, I don't know. I would seek other people's advice. You know, I would seek that advice of somebody else <laughs> before making decisions like that, you know? Um, sometimes they're going to try and help you, okay? There's haters. Haters are going to people that, like, literally they're hating on you, you know? And you could just tell. But when they do that, don't get surprised because it's, like, think about it. You're like, wait a minute. So this, this, this is a hater and they're hating on me. Why are you surprised? That's what they're supposed to do, aren't they? <laughs> you know? So sometimes you'll be like, you'll be almost caught off guard and like getting your feelings like, why is this person? Wait a minute. That's just a hate, right? So you got to know that, identify that, be aware of what's going on. Okay. But also you might have some naysayers that might be someone that's not a hater. A hater, you can see them from a mile away. A naysayer come and slide right up under you. They might, you might even have your arm around. You might be hanging out at a dinner with them, buying a, and you think that they're in your circle. They got your back, and they think they got your back, but they don't know what the heck they're even talking about. So they're trying to give you advice where they think they're helping, but they're actually hurting you. You know, by putting self doubt in there. Well, maybe you should move back home with mommy. It'll be more safe here. Grandma's getting sick. It'd be better if you were back here with grandma. You could save the money. It'll be safer, you know? And, and, and you, you might, like, do you think that that's good for you to move back home with your mom? Like, you're gonna have her start making your appointments for you next and making you lunch in a plastic, in a baggie? Like, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? We're trying to get out of all that. So the, the thing is, is sometimes they may be people that are in your corner and they think they're helping you, but they're putting that naysaying going on right? And putting that weakness into your mind. So LeBron James was just interviewed. You guys know LeBron James um, got knocked out of the playoffs like a few days ago. Okay. And I forget which team they even knocked them out. Do you, what team knocked the Lakers out? The, uh, the Phoenix, Phoenix Suns. Suns. That's right. He was talking about Booker. He said Booker play good. D Booker, whatever. So um, LeBron James gets knocked out of the playoffs, you know? And they were saying to him like this, they were like, LeBron, you had to go from playing in the bubble last year to no off season to right back into a new season. And they were like, what, like, uh, what was going through your mind? How hard was it? He's like, it was so hard. It was mentally draining. And they're like, they're like, well, like, what were you thinking about? He's like, the thing is, I couldn't think about how sore I was. I couldn't think about my family. I couldn't think about anything because if I did, it made me weaker. It made me weaker and I couldn't be weak during the season. You know, now it's the off season, I can recover. So, you know, that's the whole point is, is you don't want to even start thinking they're going there because that just puts that weakness and that weak thoughts in, into you. And LeBron, you know, he said, does it perform at a high level like that? You can't even have that, you know, thoughts are going into you. So. I got all these numbers behind me right here. I told you we were going to go over numbers today, didn't I? Did you think it was going to be like this? I tried to prepare you. Yeah? Was it okay or what? Give me your, give me your feedback. Did you learn anything? Was it too confusing? I'm sorry. I, I, I got a little lost here. NBA conditioning during the NBA? Mm, not right now. We're too, too late on time. We okay. spent I'm overboard, way overboard on time. So um, just go back over your notes. Casey will ask you, your manager can break it down for you, you know. Um, but uh, beyond this, uh, any, any like broad, any, anything hey, you want to touch on or wrap up that's super important over there on the- Hello, can you hear me? Gotta, yes. Hey, Tommy, just got to ask, man, did you take like theater classes or something? Because all of a sudden, I feel like it's been the movie. You're so animated. Like you, you do the expressions and everything. <laughs> man, it's been a blast, but it's been like, no, you I, know, 
crazy looking at all these numbers and stuff, but great job, man. I appreciate it. I respect it. And it was funny at times. It was kind of uh, you know, interesting at times. You were great, man. Uh, hey, I like your shirt. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I was just trying to get comfy. I was in a dress shirt and it was, I was getting sweaty here. I was like, might as well take advantage of it, you know, just get comfy. The pinstripes, man. I love the pinstripes. Yeah. I actually got pinstripes on here too. Let's see exactly. that. That's you what know? I'm talking about, bro. That's like uh, the Italian mafia. That's like the first suit that they buy you we, when you get got the chains as well, bro. Black pinstripe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got the chains and everything. Right. Okay, well, guys, it was a pleasure to be able to speak with you guys today. Honor and privilege to be able to work with you guys. And I'm glad to, uh, glad that you guys um, stuck and hung on with me here. I know I spent way, way more time than I was supposed to. Um, but uh, obviously, there was a lot of money on the line. I wanted to break it down. Um, keep going over these numbers. Keep reviewing them. Uh, it's not going to stick with you the first time. I literally went over this like weekly. I've, I've been going, I go over this every this every two weeks we have a training class. I've been running training class for like 12 years. So I go over this, these numbers at least once a week. Cause I'm always in my office. Like I probably will meet with, you know, Nicole one day and we'll go over like her numbers and we're going to probably break these numbers down again and again. And then I'll break them down with Drew and I'll break them down with Josh. And then on Wednesday, I'll probably break them down with Natalie. And then we'll go, like, I break these numbers down all the time all the time. So if you want to be, especially in leadership too, you want to know this stuff inside and out, right? So take the time. It's worth it. Path is all math, you know. Um, other than that, that we went, went overboard. So uh, I'm going to cut off for here today. Uh, have a great phone session tonight. Call your manager, hook up with the manager. Take a break though. Don't just run into Zoom calls right away. Tell your manager, take a little break and then hook back up with them. Hop on the phones tonight. Um, learn phones, master the phones. Have a great phone session tonight. Have a great first week. I'll, I'll see you guys on Friday. So I'll be back on here on Friday and we'll do a recap. If you have questions throughout the week, write them down and, and we'll go over them on Friday. Any questions, even tomorrow, tonight, you're driving home. You got me Friday for any questions that you want to wrap up. Cool? Great. So I'll break them down for us again. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's have a great day.